Hey, Jeff. What's going on, Lou? How are you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Well, we we have another guest in the league that hasn't been on before, and this will make everybody. This will be everybody but Dave One. Steiger out in Germany, and we're going to see if we can do a workaround with him. If, uh, if we can do it like the Monday of July Fourth weekend, which I think is July third. We you know, it might yeah, it might come to this. It might have to, yeah, we might have to do it, but we'd have to do it earlier in the day, like around one o'clock. Yeah, and then it would be like what early evening for him, so that would work. It'd be yeah, that would be like eight o'clock for him. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> oh. So, uh, yeah. Before I do the standings, you want to bring in our special guest? Why not? Here he comes. <laughs> I'm just waiting to hear that dial up sound. <laughs> His picture was pretty good yesterday when I did a little test with him. There he is. I'll be damned. The man himself, Mr. Six and Oh, turn your oh your your mic hasn't connected yet, dude. It'll just take a few minutes. Uh, moments. <laughs> minutes. <laughs> All right. The picture's right and clear. Are you there, John? Oh. He gone. He gone. Well, I'll start with the standings, and then uh, we'll, uh, he'll be coming in, okay? All right. I got all to right. move up some places this week. All right. Well, first of all, I didn't change the date on here. The ones I sent out, it said through May 28th, but it's actually, you know, through June 4th. So I corrected that for tonight. Right. And let me bring John back in, see if that'll work. Okay. He had a nice week to be the uh, guest here. Yeah, 525 points by John. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty big week. You you make me paranoid. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that he had 418. Can you hear us, John? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, you're in. I'm nice. in. Good to see you. Been a while. What's up, my friend? Uh, hey, John. Lane. Yeah. So, did you plan this out to go six and zero oh before you'd be be on this week? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, all by design, for sure. <laughs> just week. wait till this week to to try hard. Five hundred twenty-five. Well, you know I'll tell you. No, it's it not the luck of this podcast, right? The uh, um, I wait. I wait. Pitching matchups, maybe more heavily than anyone, or seemingly more heavily, heavily or than other people. And all my pitchers were going against were the Dodgers, um, Toronto, um, um, Atlanta. So I wasn't able to play my starters like I wanted to. And this week, last week, there was a window where I was actually playing Kansas City, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and, and uh, Baltimore on the road, you know, at their at their park. So I took advantage of that. Now you didn't. You have you have Bobby Miller on your team. Yes, I do. And you didn't start him last night, right? No, I thought I was up by up enough points. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't start him, right? Right, I did not start him. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I mean, uh, we're not. When I was talking to you, I, I think you thought your lead was. I hadn't done the math. I hadn't calculated um, if uh, if I if I was safe, and then um, but you it turned were safe. out safe. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're yeah. definitely keeping it close to zero on everything, man. I mean, you're you're under a little bit in uh, you know third base play. You're under just a little bit in catcher play, only minus three, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, one over on right field, one over on utility, and you only up. 19.1 uh, innings pitch for the year. So as far as managing your uh, your projected gains and everything, then you're right on uh, right on time with that. 
Yeah. Yeah, I pay attention to that for sure. I see it yeah, shows. Well, this week. Yeah, I usually catch it after I'm up by like five games on something and go, God damn, I got to fucking start backing off here. Well, with this 6-0, and you moved up past Knockers, who actually went 0-6. And uh, so you're – Boy, what up. a – they had a rough week, dude. That's yeah. that's about the lowest point total I've seen in a while for a week. That's barely over half of what you had, John, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I had good it's, pitching matchups. So it's they like – It was out. Yeah. If he had like, uh, you know, like – 262, he would have been just under half of what yeah. John had. <laughs> just a well, smidge over. So John's only seven and a half back, and we'll see later the prediction. Uh, we'll see what the prediction uh, model says. I actually uh, did something different with the prediction model, added just a little wrinkle to it. But you can see Satch still has his one game lead over second place Gags. And uh, what else is notable this week besides? Besides right here, let's play in Capital Knockers. Uh, the Daddies moved up to seventh. You were in tenth, right? Yes, so I was. That's three spots. You can see how tight this is. Look at I pulled seventh. a big McBride from last week. He was like in tenth, and then he bounced up into seventh in one week, you know. So I, that was inspiring to me. So I, I figured that uh, that's what I wanted to do this week. Yeah, so he's um, – it's only a game and a half separating seventh from eleventh. So that's, that's pretty nice. And we can see, you know, seven and a half – from uh, fifth up to first, that's obviously not a very big lead. And, uh, you know, knockers are kind of in the middle by themselves here, right? So, but uh, Smack dab. We can see the Buddha standing. Let me – I'll go over to the glance thing. Um, so the uh, Buddha Kings are uh, let's play, plus 2.3 wins now. That's new. Anything in red is new. So you can see let's play is 31-26. And according to Buddha, they should be like 33 and 24. And that doesn't take into account overages, underages, anything. Luck. It just, it's just what your points were. So these amount of points, this amount of points adds up to, on average, a 33 and 24 record usually. What is it? Uh, 26 points above or below average results in an extra win on average. So, but, uh, so it, let's play could actually be, you know, more like five and a half out. Uh, games played over just still Spear and McBride's the over and the under and uh, Gags in the middle and then the IP overages knockers with plus 118 that's wow been, that's been gonna be hard sort to of steady though so I think they're starting to manage it a little bit maybe with this bad week they uh, might have, who knows maybe they pulled a, a pitcher on Sunday I, I, I don't look at it that closely but talking to Chris uh, you know throughout you know the last couple weeks I mean he's been having it rough on the pitcher end especially a relief pitcher. It doesn't seem like anything he's trying to do will work for him this year. So who knows, maybe the second half of the season will be a totally different story. And then you can see the cows have the largest underage, which actually isn't an underage, it's plus eight. So everybody's over. And then he's also the, he's also the closest to zero. So uh, cows have both the underage and the uh, PP, PP, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, they're holy cows. Oh, my goodness. They're holy cows. Um, the holy cows uh, did three games of a weekend warrior. In. That E is left off on purpose, right? The weekend. Where did John go? Can you see me? Can you hear me? No. You see, like, your floor or ceiling? I don't know what it is. I think oh, your, right. your phone flipped or something. I got you. I got you. Hold on. I'll fix this. I thought maybe you were changing or something. Uh, is so that you're, better? You're Am I, in frame? I can't see myself. Am I in frame? Yeah, you're in yeah. frame perfectly. All right. You're cutting a little bit off the top of your head, but it's not that big of a deal. No, that's perfect. There you go. Now you're perfect. All right. It's right in the middle. How, I don't know how to manipulate this where I can see. I can see you guys, but I can't see myself. Not that I need to. But how do you do that? Where, where on this menu do you find that? Oh, you're asking the wrong guy because I don't know what you're <laughs> working with. It's a Zoom thing. Is it on your phone? Yeah. I never do Zoom on my phone. I'm always doing it from my computer. Yeah, I can get you, but I can't. I can see both of you, but I can't see myself. Anyways, if I get out of frame, tell me. Well, you can watch yourself tomorrow when this is posted online. <laughs> but you can see this, you can see the screen and everything, the screen share. Right. I can see. Yes, I can see that right. too. All right, so cows, 
were on pace for the 0 and 6 going into the weekend, and they managed a 3 and 3. And then uh, McBride's lost a couple of games from what they were on pace for. I think they went 2 and 4, so they were on pace for a 4 and 2. And uh, so this is the new thing. Uh, instead of all that BABIP and FIP, I have uh, I just did BABIP for hitting and pitching, and I converted it to points as best I could. And uh, so we have a lucky BABIP hitting points, and that's uh, Hack Wilson with plus 24. And the daddies have uh, you know the most unlucky uh, BABIP hitting points. They're at minus 26. Why am I always there? It seems like I'm there every goddamn week. Your BABIP... Uh, went up to 288 so you're getting pretty close i think the average for the league is 300 so you're you're getting closer to the average so maybe maybe uh you'll continue and uh, somebody else will be there and then yep. as far as, go ahead i got some second half guys <laughs> and as far as lucky babbitt pitching it's the gaggers plus 23 and then unlucky babbitt pitching is satchel minus 22 points now I, I i'll explain a little bit how i converted it to points and the predicted top four is the same as last week. So Satch, Gag, Play, and Spear. And the players of the week. Uh, John had, uh, the Let's Play had Shohei Otani, the hitter. And uh, Spear and, and uh, Spear had a couple. They had uh, Jonah Heim, catcher of the week. Yeah, and, uh, started to regret that fucking move. And Marcus Stroman. Uh, Gaggers Roman had a great week, wasn't he? A uh, picture of the month or some shit. I didn't player see. Him. I don't know. I think he, he won an it. award for like player of the month or pitcher of the month. He's top five in the leagues for sure. He's uh, definitely and moving up, fantasy, fantasy wise. You know, for a guy, here's the thing: the always the knock on him was that he could not put a whole season together. He would have a brilliant outing, and then he'd have three mediocre outings. Then he'd have a good one, then three mediocres, and his ERA was okay, but he never really, like, got consistent. And for this last month, he's actually been consistent. This year, has he only had just the one clunker? I know he had one clunker. Did he have another one? Or? Oh, he had a pretty bad clunker. That was like almost like eight or seven runs in, like, two innings, and then he was out. But that Did was a while see? ago. Did you see the That's Soto true. slide last night? Yeah, man, that's one thing. That's one of the reasons why a lot of the fucking players have a problem with Strowman. If you're on the other team, it pisses you off. Right. But if yeah. you're on your team, the hitters right. are probably thinking, Jesus Christ, now I'm going to get one in a year. Well, there's <laughs> that. But he, he seems to be a good clubhouse guy. He's a big rah-rah guy. I, I, didn't think, I didn't think that that was uh, out of place for Strowman because that was sort of like an inside joke with him and Soto, you know. Soto did, the, did a little strut. Well, he was showing them up. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. But I think Soto sort of laughed about it. I don't know. I mean, maybe he had maybe a smile on his face, but that smile looked like <laughs> you fucking little prick. That's what I read. That's what I read too. <laughs> I, don't, I personally, whatever you know, who who cares what I think? But uh, it, uh, I personally didn't think it was any. I didn't have any problem with it. You know, that's how that's how they play the game today. Bat flip. They do all that stuff. Hey, you know what? The interesting thing from this Players of the Week is a a uh, a guy who doesn't have any PEDs in the system that did it for the outfield there, Fernando Tatis. He's actually playing with the outfield more often. I thought he was a shortstop. No, no, no. They're trying. They're trying to preserve his health. And uh, he's one of the better out. Yeah, I think he's like his jump. His jump speed is like ninety nine percent. Like he's 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 a hell of an athlete. Obviously. Well, yeah, and, but where, where are they playing him, actually? Is it center field, left field, right field? I'll right, tell, field. Uh, right field. Right, right field? field? Guy's got a cannon. No, let me write. Let me, no, I think he's in center field, Soto's in left. Okay. Well, yeah, Soto, I thought he's Soto was in right. Field. I don't know. Oh, Soto's Soto in right? right. Soto's in left tonight. I thought Soto was left, but I don't know. I, I don't watch Padres much. Well, he, Soto now qualifies. He was a right fielder for Washington. They're playing the Cubs right, right now. Right. Oh, one more thing about Stroman that's kind of interesting. Well, not might fill in the narrative a little bit. Um, two years ago, they talked about him developing a changeup, which was brand new to his arsenal, and he didn't master it this year. And if, if that's a, if that's a pitch they're really excited about, and maybe that's one of the. I haven't looked at his pitch mix, but maybe that's something that's working for him this year. If you were the Cubs, would you trade Stroman this year? 
Depends. He's got one more year on his deal after this. That's it. Depends. But they need you to know, fill the staff. You know what I mean? Like I think off, he's out off the table. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna get to the point where they're gonna have to consider contending. You know, I mean, uh, it's pretty easy to contend in that division. And they're gonna need they're gonna need to fill a staff, right? Right now they have what Strowman and Steele. But Tyone, do you trade? Did, let's did put it this Tyone way: pitched you, a good game his last game. I don't. Do you, do you trade Strowman? Get that money off your books so you can uh, throw more money at at uh, Otani when he hits the market. Uh, I don't know. I, I'd rather keep Strowman and let somebody else spend fifty million on Otani. You know, so you're, you're gonna pick, you're gonna pitch her and a hitter though. Yeah. yeah, you're getting a top flight pitcher and a top flight hitter. And the thing. Left, hitting left handed and Wrigley, that'd be sick, dude. I'm not oh, saying that, I'm not saying he's not amazing, but it does clog up your DH spot, and you can you can strategically use that, you know, give guys a rest and keep their bat in the lineup. Well, you can give him a rest once in a while too. I mean, it doesn't mean he has to play 162 games. I'm just saying there's I mean, drawbacks to it, especially because I don't know how much he's going to command, you know. So, if I was, if you know, I was he could always, you know, what? Here's the thing, though, he would. He was playing the right field for Angels back in the day, um, you know, even just up to a couple years ago. So, yeah. so he what's never, the, what's the, you can throw him out there. What the fuck not? He never, he never. I've had him for the last couple of years, and he never has qualified for an outfield spot. He's never played enough games. But you, want, you want, uh, okay, well, you want him to pitch and you want him to hit. Those are the important two things, right? So. Yeah, they, I guess they don't want him to pull a hammy running the outfield. And he's getting older, right? Just like all of us. Well, but he's not that old. I mean, no, is he but 30? I'm that going forward, when you, when you sign this guy to the big bucks. That's true. That's true. You know? Yeah, but after watching like guy like Ichiro, <laughs> who's timeless, you're just like, man, maybe he's got that little thing going on with him. Uh, he is 28 years old right now. He's in his prime. Yeah. He's in his he's prime. A, he's younger uh, than I thought. I would probably say uh, maybe a seven-year deal. He's going to want ten. Well, why but, would he get ten if, like, if Judge is going to get, you know, at nine? Well, Harper got one, didn't? Uh, Machado got nine. What did yeah. Soto was offered ten, four hundred something million? It was actually more years than that. I think it was like thirteen or some shit. Yeah. Who would sign that? If you're a player, who would sign that deal? 13 years with the same team. I mean, if shit goes sideways in that town for you and you just want out for some reason, it just doesn't seem like. Well, and then you don't. Sign, go, you don't but then again, if it's like, if you, if you really player, if player, you start to suck just a little bit, you're untradeable because nobody's going to take yeah. the contract on for players somebody who's demand, not the top player. All the time, Jeff. What's that? Players demand trades all the time. I'm sure, sure that I'm sure. Well, I'm not sure, but I mean, I would think that uh, if you are going to sign a long deal, it would probably be an easy thing to get an opt out with the team because they're they're probably worried about the last years of that contract anyway. So I imagine they would be like, oh, "Yeah, sure, okay." You know. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Well, I mean, I there's a lot to... of players that have opt out clauses. I mean, shit. I wish Hayward would have used his, but uh. That didn't come to effect. Well, I want to feature uh, John's team here. All right. Let's play. Um, you can see the pitching. They are number one now in ERA and FIP. So that's legit. That's some legit stuff. Um, that's because you're uh, picking and choosing. How many pitchers do you have on your roster? One hundred percent. I am. Um, uh, there's just certain teams. I'm not. I'm not going to pitch Baltimore in Baltimore. I'm not going to pitch. I'm not going to pitch, uh, um, you know, Tampa Bay. Period. You know, I'm not going to pitch uh, um, uh, the Braves. I just, I'd rather save those bullets. Yeah, dude, you've got like one bench player on your hitter side and five bench players on your pitching side. Now I see, and you got like, and all those guys on the bench, it's actually, they're all starting pitchers. Yeah, I mean, one reason, one reason I'm. <laughs> Having when you have a when you have a stable of pitchers, somebody's going to have a good game, and that's how it usually breaks. Then that's why it usually stay around zero, um, because that week, maybe let's say let's say there's let's say I have ten starters or eleven, maybe five of them are going to get good starts, and then I use them that week. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, you got to pick the right pictures too. That's the other thing. <laughs> and you got to be good I, at choosing. I like know? my pictures. Knock on wood, but I like them. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen, well, at least when I do it, I look at different outings and uh, I'm not always right. I mean, I might have sat a guy down and missed a good start. And then I think this thing's a sure thing. Oh, they're playing the Royal I sat, or something, you know, and like it's, I, I sat know. I sat Chris Bassett against uh, um I sat Chris Bassett against Houston to watch him throw a, a complete game no hitter or not no hitter but a complete game oh. shutout. <laughs> oh, I saw that. I was like, and, and that was the, and that was the week where I would if I had those those points it would make move me from like a a two and four to a three and three or whatever you know. At least, yeah. right? You know, this last week I had an option of picking up this Paul Blackburn or that guy Weathers <laughs> for San Diego. And I picked Blackburn, and he got me zero points. <laughs> but Weathers got minus 10. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I, even though he got zero points for five innings burned, I still was like, man, I dodged a bullet there. Shopping in the in the cutout bin, right? Mm -hmm. Your choice yeah, is zero those, or minus 10. It's all those really stupid movies that you're shopping at Best Buy. It's like three ninety nine movies. And there's there's things like there's there's uh, shows like Twins and Leprechaun uh, Five <laughs> and fucking other bullshit. That's what we have to deal with with the waiver wire for that's, starting that's, pitchers. That's, if you look at if you look at the starting pitchers that are left now, um after uh, um uh, after all the injuries and um if you were gonna do a percentage rostered pitchers left, like starting pitchers, like the highest you're gonna find. There might be one or two outliers, but most of them are in the teens. Like, so the tip pitchers are that are left are only rosters by less than twenty percent of the teams in Yahoo. Yeah, and every time you look at one of them, they've got like they've got like six ERA, <laughs> and they've gotten shelled the last three weeks. Yeah, that number might even be lower too. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Let me look it up. Well, John is uh, his hitting is good. He's a uh, fourth in that linear weights bastardization uh, stat that I do. Mm. So he's fourth in that. He's bab up. He might be a little lucky or he might have a fast team or a hard hitting team, who knows, or, or a Jeff McNeil kind of opposite field hitting team, but probably is a little bit lucky on bab up. I've got some speed. So, so the new thing I did was to try to, uh, Gage, how many extra hits that you should have had and uh, and convert it to hitting points? So, so each hit, each extra hit that your hitters get is worth around 1.9 points. The average, the average non-home run hit is about 30% of the way between uh, a single and a double. Okay, so it's like you get like 1.3 points, whatever, from the hit. And then the runs and the runs batted in, the expectancy is uh, for a single, it's like a little less than a quarter of a run scored and run batted in. And a, dou a double is about a little less than a half run scored and run batted in. Anyway, so it adds up to about 1.9. And then uh, and then I multiply it by 0.65 because some of the articles I read said that hitter BABIP is about 65% luck and 35% what the batter can control. So I multiplied that by 0.65 just to be, you know, extra conservative on this, you know, try to be accurate. And um, Dude, look at the these same codes thing. that you're punching in there for these. That's so crazy. All right, can, so, uh, can you walk that back one more time? Okay, so this this number, let's say, let's go to John here. His BABIP says that he has had, uh, Come on, 23 extra hitting points estimated. It's obviously an estimate. It's based on the number of hits that you uh, that you had. Um, it's you know your BABIP minus the league BABIP times the at bats minus home runs minus strikeouts plus sack flies. Those are all your balls in play besides homers, you know. And uh, anyways, and I said it's about 1.9 points. Uh, each hit you get, the average non-home run hit, uh, you get about 1.9 points on average from in our league. 
and then uh, and then I multiply that by 0.65 because I didn't figure that out myself. I just uh, I believed in what they the, the guy that wrote the article I think on Fangraph said that 65% of hitter BABIP is luck, and 35% uh, is, is stuff that they can control. And pitchers, it's actually a little bit higher luck um, component. So for for pitchers, uh, your pitchers have let me make sure this is right. Your pitchers have allowed 19 more pitching points than than they should have, according to this. And um, so pitcher points is uh, oh geez. Um, I'm going by uh, an extra, an extra 1.35 points per uh, extra BABIP hit for pitchers. Um, that includes the um, the earned run expectancy from from having a, a hit that's like I said about a third of the way between a single and a double, and then uh, I add in the out that you would have gotten. And then there's actually a slight effect on wins and saves and holds. So it, it, I'll probably will tweak these, but it's, it's close enough for, for now anyways. And then you can see the luck factor in pitching is, is about 75% as opposed to 65% for hitting. So they say that 25% uh, of the pitcher's BABIP is not luck and it's split between the pitcher's skill and then it's deep, the defense behind them. So. Luke, you didn't realize you were talking Luke, to the Luke, Luke, James Luke. of fantasy baseball. Hey, what is it? Hey, Luke, can you uh, can can you focus that attention on the stock market and help me pick stocks? Because uh, that kind of that kind of analysis should be making more money than uh, than um, um. Just just invest in the mutual funds and spread it out. <laughs> well, it's like I was saying. He's like he's the Bill J. Fuck fantasy baseball. Help me attack the stock market, man. No, I, I I wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, I, I, have a, a, I do have my CFP certificate, but um, but I just invest in mutual funds myself. You know, just I just uh, you know asset allocation, spread things out. So he's like so, Bill, the Bill James of fantasy baseball. Yeah, I think you'd have to know a lot more to, about the individual companies to really do it well. I think, anyways. But so, what's this discretion? Two hundred two twenty twenty three discretion. What does that mean over there? How is that like? Is it where everybody lines up? What, what is that? This little gray area over here on the side here with the, everybody's name, Big McBride is at the top. Oh, oh, way over here. All the here. way to the right. That's, um, that, I just have that in there as a little side thing. It's like, it's just our uh, auction spending. Oh. So you can see, you know, the Gagger spent the most on hitting and Sombrero spent the least on hitting and uh, Hack spent the most on pitching. Gagger spent the least on pitching. These are all discretionary dollar values, so they don't count the one dollar that every every player has. This gotcha. is the, you know the amount over a dollar. And then uh, okay, all right. All the right. Percentages the most lopsided was um, for hitting was uh, Hack fifty eight forty two, and Gagger spent ninety nine to one on hitting. So wow. The, the average for Dude, the league is I swear, I swear to God, man, what you've done this year. With that, like salary for your pitching staff, pretty pretty freaking amazing, yeah, and it's I mean, going to probably change the game a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's been great, but you know, I I really can't say that it's most. It's not mostly luck, you know. What I mean, so so, and uh, so we'll see. We'll call happens. it luck, maybe call it just you pick the right guys. Even if they pitch. And, you know, like I expected them to pitch this year for the rest of the year, I'm, I'm still, I'll still come out ahead as far as what I was doing, you know? Right. But, uh, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't think it's because I know that Nate Eovaldi is going to be good or something like that. It's just. Hey, that's a thing. You know, if you look at, if you look at, um, if you look at the top 25 hitters, right. The first page of the hitting leaders, all those guys like Acuna and Soto and judge all everybody on that list start the preseason less than we're, we're in the top hundred in the preseason. There's no well, outliers. On that's the why you card. don't trade somebody too quick. If you, you look, never know. If, if you know, if you, what, if you look at the pitchers, there's tons of outliers guys who are not in the top hundred preseason or top. You had like, like Kyle Gibson or uh, um, Nathan Avaldi. He was probably like mid 
somewhere around 200. Right. I don't know. 150. Well, here's the thing. What we if talked I could about, get them, they were, they were bottom of the barrel. I, yeah, you know, we, exactly. Here's the thing. I, what we talked about a couple like episodes ago is like some of these guys are actually benefiting from this like pitch clock and 100%. The speed 100%. of the game, you know? So, you know, maybe they were a slower player before, which was fucking them up, but making maybe working faster makes them Corbin, stay focused, you know? Corbin Burns was uh, listed as the third slowest pitcher, starting pitcher last year. And maybe that's why he's, ha he's having trouble this year. Yeah. Yeah, some people can't get adjusted to it. Some people can. But this is just a, this, I swear to God, this is like kind of a transition year for fantasy baseball because of the new rules. It you know, it we've got to figure out what the hell, how's, how, you know, when they install these rules, none of us knew how this is going to play out. So now we're seeing, okay, there's, we, some people could, okay, you can think, yeah, the bases are bigger, blah, 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 more steals. We knew that was coming. That was that was a given. But can only throw, can only throw over once. Yeah, the shift is off. But then they sped up the batter, and they've got to fucking think about other things rather than sitting in there and hitting and fucking going through their goddamn fucking with the goddamn gloves and and doing all their weird shit. They can't really do that anymore. So it's it's really taking people off their games this year. So there's some guys like Schwarber I thought would just crush it this year because they didn't have the shift on. He would get his average would be way up. Same fucking exact average, you know. Didn't do a damn thing for him on that shift. Rizzo, Rizzo driving. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I it's just this is kind of like a transition year to see who adapts to the new rules the quickest. Yeah. My thoughts. We'll, we'll see if sure. it continues the whole year that there's pitchers that were mediocre guys and they're and they're doing much better and it lasts the whole year. Then that that'll lend a lot of weight to that. But I still think it's. It's still early enough, even though we're getting a pretty sizable portion of the of the, of the uh, season, and you know we're, I think we're thirty seven percent, but it could be more than that. I, I can't remember. But uh, um, you know, if if those guys tail off like like I'm expecting a few of my guys to tail off, then then I think it'll just be a small sample thing. Well, well another thing, if another they thing don't to think about part of the equation too is that um, I I think you've seen a big a nice group of young. Rookie pitchers come up and be able to oh, hold yeah. their own. And How about that Ben Joyce? The reason behind that is probably because they've been working with the pitch clock for the last couple of seasons. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how about that Ben Joyce? How long do you think it's going to take for him to go to Tommy John? What's the over and under on that one? <laughs> uh, I looked at that and it's like Lark had picked it up about an hour before I read that article. I was like, God is, that, is, that Cubs, is that the Cubs? Is that the Cubs prospect? No, that's Ben Brown. Ben Joyce is that kid from Angels. He was a Tennessee pitcher. He throws 105. Okay. He threw 105.5 or something in college. But he was consistently 102 and 101 throughout the whole damn time he was in there. I mean, it's crazy. Hey, by the way, I looked up that Sid Finch article, and the article said oh, that he, I love it. Right on. he threw 168. That's what the 168? <laughs> 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 That's ridiculous. And they said his he had like a size fifteen shoe or some well, shit. And he was no, like with, barefoot with one shoe on. <laughs> and, and the article <laughs> came out. The article came out on on April Fool's Day. I mean, like hard, yeah. nobody should have been fooled. By that. You know what the well, funny thing was, was is that I actually read that fucking article, and uh, then there was something in the newspaper about it or something on TV, and it was just. That's like the, so they made a pop fly. Uh, you've probably seen before those like those uh, comic book covers. And uh, Blue, being a Mets fan, I got one of those Sid Finch prints, and I gave it to him last time he was in town. But god damn, what a good fucking joke by a pretty notable magazine. Yeah, epic. Yeah, and it's like that's before like like. You weren't expecting it from them, you know. It's just like out of nowhere. And wasn't he the cover guy? Wasn't he on the cover? I think they put him on the cover too. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't on the cover. He might have been. Just it was probably just an article inside. But Jeff, I sold that last week. I got eleven hundred dollars for that thing. So thank you. You know what? You're more than welcome. And I'm Wait, not paying for my late dues Jeff? for the next ten years. You sold it, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
anyways, uh, before we uh, leave the standings, I just wanted to uh, look over the uh, the prediction model. Now has that that little bit of BABIP good and bad luck in here. Now I don't I don't know exactly how it affected things, but it didn't. But you can see um, for the rest of the year, Satch Gags play fifty five, and then some teams down here, Sombreros and Cows, predicted to be uh, just above five hundred. And uh, McBrides are now predicted to be 42 and 57. That would that would trail. But uh, you know these things change what weekly, right? <laughs> so, well, they're predicting me to be just mediocre. So it does predict that baked. It does have baked in uh, last now. Um, three games behind Hack. Doesn't like Hack. Well, Hack's had such a bad run. I guess I should have talked about Hack a little bit. They uh, they're the they're in last place now, and any period from this week until the whole season, they 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 at least you know are tied for the worst record. Well, for the last five, he's eight and twenty-two. I don't know if you can slide that over and see what he was for the first four. Yeah, eight and twenty-two, nine and twenty-seven, thirteen, sixteen, No, he's got a three-way tie here, but that's still. You know, at least tied for the worst record, and then of course the season-long record he's tied for the worst record was Holy Cows. So, yeah, but Hack, Hack needs some uh, needs some guys to come back and and uh, what's nice about this year is that it's not like he's thirty-five games out. You know, one and a half games better, and he's in seventh, like the dad. So, this is a fucking weird year. So I'm gonna stop that share. I'll try to try to get a better way to explain the whole Babbitt thing. I don't know. Hey, I'm going to go through some oh, uh, yeah. some uh, moves and injuries. You guys want to hear about moves and injuries? Sure. All right. So they moved DeGrom to the 60-day disabled list. I didn't even hear that. So yeah, that happened just today. So that's going to – that's uh, that's fucked up. I mean, what a waste of – you know, DeGrom – is broken. I don't think he's going to be able to. He when he pitches, he's great, but he can't pitch that way too long. He's he always goes down. I I, I I'm guessing that the way that he's going to be able to come back and pitch well is is just going to have to be a new guy. He's not going to be able to throw 100 miles an hour. He's going to have he's to, to figure out a different way to pitch because the way he's pitching now is fucking him up. Yeah, throw like you know, be happy with like 97 or something. And I'm sure he's got the stuff that he can still be one of the you know best pitchers out there but what are they what are they the football coach says the best ability is availability well he's right. he doesn't have any of that <laughs> yeah uh brandon Lau, tampa bay he's on a 10 day uh here's a here's one that you probably already know about there lou uh thomas nito dfa'd and narvaez is oh. back up with okay now. yeah I, I i thought they would send him to the minors but maybe he's out of options well he's probably out of options they dfa'd him so if nobody wants him and looking by that betting average probably not i think um, he'll get a job because i he's not out. necessarily hurry alfaro is out there he just well i'll i, I, I like alfaro too see i like all the catchers i think that's like my sauce i love i love them all you know but, did, um, did i put alfaro on here I like him too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought right. he was so that good. was that was uh letter L in my little thing here. Uh yeah, or Jorge Alfaro's out there. So what would you rather go after? Would you rather go after Jorge Alfaro or would you rather go after Thomas Nito? Well, I think if I would say Alfaro. If a team wants a good defensive backup catcher, they they Nito would fit the bill. And the thing is, he does have a little bit of pop. It's just that for two you know, a year and a half now, he's just been such a liability band you know uh, at the plate not behind the plate but at the plate he's just unplayable right. but i figure one team will think like we can fix them or just a change of scenery thing so i would i, I would think that he would get a job but I, I don't know maybe oh he's gonna find a place i mean he's kind of a, he's a he's a major league catcher but um i don't know he'll probably fucking end up on your uh triple a team to be honest with you all yeah, right, moving I on. They would, I thought they would send him to Syracuse, but maybe he's out of options. Or something. You know, he's been around for a while now. So I saw All him right. play at the uh, Hartford Yard Goats. That's the uh, Rockies minor league team in Hartford. 
well, I guess you knew that from Hartford Yargos, but uh, um, Nita was playing in the Binghamton Mets, or actually the uh, they changed their name to the Rumble Ponies, but uh, I think Mets is better than Rumble Ponies, but personally, but I'm not a scout at all, but we, my son and I were watching and uh, he was rifling throws to second and he looked great. And it was like, and I didn't really know anything about him then. And I was like, man, that guy, you know, maybe, maybe it's cause I don't go to a ton of games, but I was like, that guy has a damn good arm, you know? And then, uh, and then he came up to the majors and it turned out he was a really good defensive catcher. And it was like a, he got votes for the, you know, go glove uh, catcher. I think last year even. Oh shit. Sure. And, and he, his hitting was atrocious. He wasn't getting help. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no points for defense. <laughs> All right, next up, Nestor Cortez, MRI. He just had an MRI done today on his shoulder, uh, bothering him. He's a 15-day possibility, so keep an eye on that if you have Nestor Cortez. Zach Plezak was DFA today by the fucking Guardians. Yeah. I... Wow. You know what? He was never the same guy after COVID. I mean, and then that whole Clevenger thing and him and yeah. him going out and getting all that bad press, I think that really fucked with his head. But he should be able to get over that by now, you know. You would think, but I don't know. It's weird. Here's... It's weird with, you know, I guess that's what's fun about fantasy baseball. It's like you you get a guy like Plesak in rotation, and you think like, all right. I mean, he's not like he's uh, an ace, but I mean, he's going to be a solid member of the rotation for years to come. And it's like, and he just sucks, you know. Like, yeah. Once you feel like you have somebody figured out, uh, they they go and change on you, you know. Or maybe, or maybe the Indians rookies are just that good, and they got that other kid coming up, Williams too. Yeah, the they thought they thought they'd, they'd rather have somebody better in that spot. I mean, that could the ERA be is like over seven, isn't it this year or something? Yeah, maybe he just needs a change of scenery. I wouldn't mind seeing the Cubs give him a shot just to see what he can do for a couple innings in the middle of relief and stuff, you know. Like, you know, he, he he likes the steakhouses in town. We know that. So <laughs> his uh his dad played here. He's from Crown Point, Indiana. You know, I, I his dad was from Crown Point, Indiana. I don't know if he is, but um yeah, maybe a change of pace would do well for him. He's been stuck in Cleveland forever. He's he's a former gagger. You know, if, oh. if you know the gaggers they're like the gaggers are the last team that will drop a guy i think the other 10 or 11 teams in the league would have would have dropped the uh, pitcher before the gaggers do so if the, if the gaggers drop him then he's you know it's, ba it's all a bad sign <laughs> all right i got a couple of releases here hands are alberto from the white Sox released goodbye go find another team to play with and then for the a's jesus aguilar First yeah. baseman. Yeah. He, uh, if you can't keep, stay on the A's, man, I'm sorry. That's why I thought maybe they would uh, bring Voight in, you know. What the hell? Uh, speaking of another release, Yankees released Cole Calhoun. He just played Done last with night. Him. He played last night, too, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, they released him. I think it's. I think they released him today. Well, yeah, he played last He was in the outfield last night, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, what did he do? Did he something bounce off his head and go to the I, wall? I, I was work, I was working, so I missed the game. But um, but I know he was. In, I'm I'm on ninety nine. I'm gonna give you a ninety nine percenter that I was that he was in the lineup. You know, what's <laughs> interesting when he when he came up with he came up with Texas, right? Here's the thing: he might there might have some. He was on team before Texas too, I think. But yeah, I remember him on Texas. He he had. There are people that were very high on him. Um, he I was like. Yeah, he was. A, he, he was, was supposed prophet. to be a stud. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't long ago that I liked him. I mean, I think I had him on my team even. I don't know. I mean, like know, even two, you know how we cycle through these guys. Guys. All right. Think? I've got uh, – well, he just walked away for a second. Uh, okay, so Alex Wood. Alex Wood. Is everybody here? I'm here. Okay. Hi, <laughs> area. Okay, so Alex Wood, he's on the 15th day with a back strain. Uh, hey, Justin Steele, Justin Steele, that one hurts me, man, because I had this kid. It hurts and, tough, dude. And 15 day disabled list for forearm tightness that worries me a little bit because whenever I hear forearm tightness, I hear Tommy John about fucking two weeks later. No yeah. good for the Cubbies either. I mean, that's oh. what I mean. Like, that's what I mean. Like, that the Cubs would be, I think they'd be likely to keep Stroman because you can get, yeah, you can get a haul for him, but at some point, you'd have to 
try to contend, right? And they, they, they think that they're they can contend in that division, but they need uh they need more pitchers, you know. They need, yeah. Especially without steel. I mean, that's just not well, gonna happen. They keep touting these guys, a couple of these guys that got in the minors though, but you know, they might be doing that just to buy themselves some fucking time because they know their pitching is a little suspect. Did Tyone have a better start? Because I think somebody picked him up. He's been dog shit. But his last start, was terrible. it a good start? Uh, you know what? What's a good start for Tyon right now? No. Like three or four runs. He had like an ERA over eight, I think, right? So you got a good start. That's good. Yeah. Uh, Joey Gallo. He's on a 10 day with left hamstring strain. Here is an interesting story I saw, too, is that Steven Strasburg has completely been shut down from doing anything physical. And they're saying he's got severe nerve damage. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to see that guy pitch again. I That's think what it's they were over saying. With. It's a real possibility that he's that he's just going to be done. Yeah, I mean, it's like, okay, if you got severe nerve damage, you just want quality of life after that point. I mean, I, I, even if your arm and shit, but if, fuck, I mean, I don't know. Do you know that's, how that works? That with sounds the pretty bad. That sounds that sounds worse than any other, like. How does that work with, with his contract? Then would it would it depend if the uh, Nationals have insurance on the contract, and then that's what will pay the uh, remainder of the contract? Baseball, baseball contracts are guaranteed. They're not like football contracts, right? Oh no, they're guaranteed, like, man. And I, and I know you can't just be a nice guy and opt out of your contract. The Players Association won't won't let you do that, you know. But I'm wondering if if he retires because of injury, if there's like an insurance clause that, that the insurance will pay the uh, remainder of the contract. No, there is. They get, a, they get a policy out on every contract they sign and they pay like, uh, what I understand is they pay like premiums based on the contract. You it know, so not the- only are they just paying this guy each game he plays, every time they get hurt, they make a claim. And it prote- so right it now, prote- Texas is getting a claim for probably uh, Jacob DeGrom because he's out for so long. His but go ahead. Would be higher Not probably. probably. It depends how you get hurt. For instance, uh, um, Jay Williams, when the Bulls drafted him, what was oh, it? Right. Years ago, he got hurt on his agent. His agent bought him a motorcycle that he didn't know how to ride, and he proceeded to tear up his knee. And the Bulls, because there's a card, there's a clause in the contract saying, you know, you can't ride your, your contract's void if you ride a motorcycle. Wow. But the, but yeah. the, Bulls, the Bulls were going back to the gentleman part, what you were saying. The Bulls did uh, um, pay most of the contract, I think, even though they didn't have to. Yep. So, you know, uh, one of the ones I can go back to is Jeff Kent. Jeff Kent was supposedly got hurt doing something when he wasn't playing. And, uh, Come to find out later, he got a motorcycle accident or did something with a motorcycle. Uh, that dude that from Colorado that was saying he claimed he was walking upstairs carrying meat <laughs> probably did something uh, similar, you know, and that was just a weird excuse. You know, there's all kinds of shit like that. And you know that uh, when you're talking about that Bulls player, that happened right not far from where Larkin was living over there off of uh, like in Roscoe Village off of, like, Polina and, like, uh, Polina, just south of, like, Belmont, you know? Jay, Basically, Jay he got that one all the way through, and he drove that goddamn bike straight into a rock pile on the train tracks. Jay Williams sat on the couch I'm sitting on right now. His agent is friends with one of my friends who went to SIU, and there was a party, and he was in this place that I'm living right now, and he sat on this couch right here. The Salukis, right? His freshman year, yeah. So his agent was a Saluki, and he bought oh. his, his his big prize, a motorcycle. <laughs> now, if you're a huge NBA fan, you'd smack the cushion twice and see if you can smell his fart from fucking eight yeah, years right? ago. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. You remember? I'm not a big basketball you remember fan. Remember Dick Duran, right? He was the coach of the yeah. Bears, right? At one time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Well, he he was a defensive back with the Lions. Like when our neighbor, when I was a kid, um, went to school with Jerron. They he went to Yale, and this is when I was a little boy. My my dad was still pretty young, and they uh, had a big like pickup basketball game next door. And my dad said all the guy, you know, all these 
aging middle-aged guys were like really playing like a rough physical basketball game. And uh, Jerron was like, he said, Jerron just stayed in the perimeter the whole time. He did not want to mix it up with these athlete wannabes, you know, and, and, and injure himself. You know, he was, he was still in, in the middle of his career at that point. I don't know what year that was, but early yeah. mid seventies. But uh, so I, I thought, yeah, that's pretty smart. right? <laughs> you know, you'd figure the football player would be, you know, the toughest of, of all those guys, but he, uh, he was also, a little smart, right? He, uh, well, he, 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 he was, he was, he was, he was uh, tagged as a brainiac early. <laughs> that was kind of his, uh, that was, a, that was the crown he wore. Yeah, I've got another guy here uh, that has been injured quite often. And uh, he's gone down again. His name is Chris Sale from the Red Sox. Boy, yeah. do they rue the day they made that trade, I'm sure. But he's got an inflamed throwing shoulder, so that's not good. They got a couple good years out of Sale. Yeah, but did they want a World still... Series with Sale? Huh? Did they want a World Series with Sale? When's the last time the Red Sox won a World I'm Series? Trying to think. Was it eighteen? It was eighteen. It probably yeah. Yeah, seventeen or eighteen. I can't remember. Cubs in sixteen. Nationals in nineteen. We'll look it up later. Well, well, well that's well, that, that's an example of why why you don't sign why you don't sign a pitcher to a long term contract, you know, like or you know someone someone in their thirties. I mean, he always had sort of a slight build too, so that would be like oh, uh, everybody thing. early on they thought that torque that torque uh, yeah. uh, that um, the the uh, ferocity that he torqued the ball that he was he was going to be done for. But if you if you let the physical, he throws you know, if you the let same that, throwing motion as Randy Johnson, and Randy Johnson never got hurt. Yeah, and Randy, he's, Randy he's tall enough that he should have had a bunch of problems, man. right? I mean, he should have. But I'm saying, like, if you let that physical ideal, uh, you know, you know, rule all your decisions, then you're going to miss out on like Pedro Martinez, right? I mean, like, like 100. You know, like look at that skinny little guy. There's no way he's going to be. He's going to, you know, stand up, be able to, uh, you know. Have a long career, and he did. Look at look at you know what I think it is. Look at Strowman dominating. He's a and he's he you know he's a um, little, he's no little dude, dude. right? Taller than I am, but but still considered a little dude, right? You know what I yeah. think it is. You know what I think it is with Chris Sale. I think it's a hold my beer, watch this fucking moment with him, and he's got just stupid bonfire injuries that like kind of cross over to his pitching. <laughs> Cutting up jersey, he, cutting up right. jersey. Last year was riding there. a bicycle, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey, this next one is interesting. Do you guys remember a, a first baseman, a big power hitting first baseman named John Singleton? I don't think so. The last time he played in the league was 2015. He was he, like this hot shit Astros, he directed, Astros uh, prospect. He directed uh, Boys in the Hood, right? No, different John Singleton. But you know what? Same name. Uh, so this guy hasn't played in the league since 2015. That was, that was, that was, my, Jeff, that was my Jeff joke for the podcast, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I remember this guy? is because I think I had him on my NA roster for a while. <laughs> is he related because to Ken he was Singleton? this monster that could crush the baseball. He was supposed to be the next fucking coming of, like, you know, some big masher at first base uh, for the Houston Astros back in the day. And at that time, they had a lot of like really good prospects. Is he related to Ken Singleton? I don't know. I do not know that. Um, he's a lot bigger than him. <laughs> it's like 6'5", 240 pounds or somewhere around that area. But uh, he just got brought back up for the Brewers because they, they released uh, Luke Boyd. And uh, he had left the baseball in 2015, and uh, he said he had a weed addiction that he had to get fixed. And then he wanted to come back to baseball. I think it was like, I don't know if it was 2000. <laughs> but he went to the Mexico League, and he was playing down there for a while. And now he is up for the Brewers. First time playing in the MLB. So it's legal in a lot years. of places now, right? He was What's just waiting for marijuana legalization. <laughs> hey, there you go. Uh, maybe he's working for the cartel. Who knows? No. Uh, but no, he's like he's like thirty fucking years old, you know. And uh, 
he's getting another cup of coffee in the uh, in the big league. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with him. Uh, speaking of Astros, rookies, Forrest Whitley, out three to four months. Yeah, I saw that. I, yeah, so if you have him on your NA roster, I think, do I have him on my NA roster? Well, I, I have him. You have him. Picture? Yeah. Yeah, you might as well. Oh, I think you offered him to me at one point or another. No. Um. Yeah, if you Not have him, probably don't want to fucking, I don't know, you can do whatever the fuck you want. But I don't think that guy's ever going to pan out. Ever. He was he, he was the number one prospect, pitching prospect, back a couple years ago. Yeah, so was Mark Appel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Manny Machado, he's off the DL. He was never on the DL. The motherfucker won't go on the uh, DL. That's part <laughs> of the problem with that guy. Uh, Manny Last year, he spent nine games. Nine games as a uh, day to day, you know they won't put him on the DL. He, I don't know, he refuses to go on DL. But yes, he's back in the lineup. But he was not he's on your the guy. DL. Yeah, <laughs> you know he's Manny having Machado? You know, Machado. He's like what big ticket item, um, and uh, he's having the worst year of his career. Larkin, Larkin was trolling me the yesterday when he sent me a, he sent me a, that Tim Anderson has a negative WAR, right? Point two zero point two WAR. Well, Machado's yeah. like right there too. And I've got uh, uh, Starling. Uh, uh, I've got Starling Marte, who's zero point zero WAR. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, my team has not been. My team has to hit better. Marte you know, looks like no he's coming around. Better. Huh? Marte looks like you know to my eyes, just to, you know, just watching him. He looks like he's coming around. They dropped him in the batting order, but he's but he's he's starting. He started off really bad last year too, but just didn't last as long as this, you know. But, uh, yeah, but he's yeah. starting to come around. But uh, Machado, Machado's having the worst year of his career, and Tim All Anderson's right. probably having the worst year of his career. Yeah, he's, he's having a really bad year. Like but Tim Anderson's another one that's always on a DL. And I, I got he's... him on too. He's getting well when he's healthy, but he's missed a lot of games. Every year he's got a stint or two. On but those the players, if they stay healthy, you know, if they get hurt and then they just lock in these numbers, then obviously it's a lost cause. But if they stay healthy, they're they're gonna do better. I don't know if it'll be, uh, you know, as good a year as the, a year or two ago. But uh, you know what I mean? Like, they Marte, just have to be better than they've been doing. Anderson, Machado, all those guys will do well as long as they stay healthy, which is not a, a given with Anderson. Um, how Anderson's been. Right. Last year and this year. All right. And I'm going to blow through some of this real quick here. Uh, St. Louis, Newt Barr, he's on the I.L. with a back injury, but that opens up the spot. And guess who's coming up? Jordan Walker's back up for the St. Louis Blue, uh, uh, fucking Cardinals. St. Louis Blues. <laughs> I almost said Blues. Uh, Alec Baum is on the I.L. with a hamstring. Chris Bryant is on the I.L. with a bruised heel. That another one. is a pussy fucking injury. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck how bruised your heel is. Get out there and fucking play, man. You know what? Play if you're playing on your toes, ain't feeling your heel. All right. So can't they DH him? Fuck that. That's some. That's some bullshit right there. How about how about just DH him until his heels better? <laughs> Until, until well, I can't heel. run, I got a bruised heel. Until his heel heals. The Rockies just make no sense, right? They you right. know who's a bruised heel? The GM they, that signed that motherfucker. They sign Arenado, the huge deal. Then they then they create a a bad environment where they have to trade him. And in that trade, I remember thinking like it makes sense. Trade him to the Cardinals. The Cardinals have Nolan Gorman. He's like one of their top prospects. He'll come back and, and play third. And they don't He's even get Gorman in the deal, you know. So it's like I was like, okay, now I don't understand what they're doing. And then, then they sign Chris Bryant. It's like they, they wanted the to spend that money anyway, and they just didn't want to keep Aaron out. I don't think understand. about the Cubs. Everybody fucking around here, fucking pull their hair on. Like, oh, they saw off the team. But yeah, Baez can't do fucking shit in Detroit. Chris Bryan can't do fucking shit in Colorado. Detroit's a hard environment to, to hit in. But yes. Rizzo was the one that hits the hardest because he's actually a damn good player still. 
And for sixteen million, I'd rather have them on my team than somebody else's team. Detroit should be a much more neutral park now. They brought the fences in again. I think it's at least the second time they've done it. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you bring the fences in. He's got to fucking make contact. But I'm saying it. It's not going to be as bad a place to hit as it as it was when it when it opened. Same thing with like City Field. You know, they they've moved in the fences at least twice in City Field now. Yeah, we I start thought, to realize that. I, saw, I was on the field. I was on the field that. Uh, I was on the field at Comerica Park. I saw Springsteen play there, and uh, um, and we and I had, I had uh, field seats, so I was out there in the outfield. And one thing someone was telling me, a local was telling me that uh, that the scoreboard at Comerica Park is tilted, where you can't see it from. They they built it first, and they didn't. They built it wrong, so you can't see the scoreboard from left field. <laughs> because and it's too late. They couldn't, they couldn't, you know, it was already it was in, it was already built, so they couldn't re-engineer it. But yeah, that that, that, that that's one of the stadium spots. I heard about that show at Comerica. You you would it think awesome. that you would think that Springsteen would have played Glory Days, but he didn't. He uh he just had that omitted from the set list because he was like, they're all expecting that that I'm gonna do really. That. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't remember what the set list was. I just you know Springsteen. I'm, I'm sure he did Glory Days if he played it. The baseball stadium. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I would think so. Yeah, you right. gotta play that if you're. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> kind of like a given. All right, that's I got speed, like that speedball by you. <laughs> yeah, that song's hey, kind of lame, isn't it? <laughs> I don't. So think this uh, this is this is this is moves and injuries from A to Z, and I'm on V. So let me get through this, and we'll go on move ourselves on. Uh, Mets acquire Tyler Wright from the Twins. How do you feel about that, Lou? Who? Tyler Wright. Remember that old first baseman from the Yankees back in the day, Tyler Wright? What's the yeah, first you guys, your Mets just acquired him from the Twins. What's his first name? Tyler. Tyler Wright. Don't. Yeah. Not familiar. No? No. I thought you would have been. That's why I put I it on here. I have giant you. gaps in my uh, baseball knowledge that, that will be exposed, uh, each, you know, each of these podcasts. <laughs> Well, speaking of New York, Harrison Bader from the Yankees is on the IL. He's got a bad hamstring. He's another one I'm starting to wonder if he's going to be uh, perennially hurt. Uh, a la, what's his fucking name from um, Houston? Brantley. I have a feeling Bader is the next Brantley. You can't really even chalk that up to bad luck because the Yankees traded for him. He was hurt. So, <laughs> yeah. You got, yeah, you got right. the guy you traded for, man. The Matt Veerling of the Detroit is on the IL. He's got like some like I guess he pulled like a strain of tendon in his finger or some shit. So that's that's not good. Uh, one more thing, Cedric Mullins is, and I'm sure John knows all about this. Yeah, is he your guy too? Yeah, yeah. he's oh, on the IL man. with a groin injury. Um, oh, but the uh, the O's sign Aaron Hicks uh, to replace him. While he's down, you got to add a you got to figure you got to add a category to uh, um, to your number puzzle that 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 factors in stints on the IL. Like who, what, what teams, like who, yeah. why, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's a number, <laughs> and mine are adding up. Yeah, you know, like, like if you take a player and figure out how many days he was out of the lineup and on the IL on your team. How many of your like drafted players? Only drafted players, not the ones that you just fucking stow because you see, oh, there's a guy out there on the 60th yeah, day. Yeah. He's got a big name. Maybe I'll just grab him and just stow him away because I have like nine spots open right now. I usually have had, you know, all 10 of my IL spots filled most of the time. And I think I'm down to about seven. And I, I've looked every now and then and I don't really, I know that I'm not going to, if they get, when they get off, I'm not going to put him in. So, I, I'm just kind of like not doing that now, you know. Like, Lou, are you hoarding <laughs> cripples? <laughs> so. All right. Uh, very last thing is, uh, do you remember a guy named Carson Fulmer? Yeah. Yeah, Vander was he a Vanderbilt pitcher? I think he was. He was a Vanderbilt yeah. pitcher, and the White Sox took him in the first round. Some people thought he was going to go one overall. And he never panned out with the White Sox. Well, this guy just came back, and he signed a minor league deal with the Angels. So you might see 
a maybe way more mature Carson Fulmer show up sometime. But uh, who knows? It's got to be exciting to play in the Angels minor league system because, like, they'll call you up. It doesn't even matter yeah. if you haven't even been there. You know, you've had two months of minor league ball. They're going to call you up. Dude, the, uh, the, uh, the Braves just called up that 20-year-old that, that starred in, in a ball two months ago. He's 20 years old. Um, What's his uh, name? Uh, 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 H. A. Smith. I should know this because I have him. Well, see, he was uh, probably a college pitcher. That's why. Well, well, he's he was not, they're not going to call up a high school kid who just got the A ball. Okay, well, but they will. Things. They will get a, like a four year senior that they 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 like draft. This is uh, a guy. Hey, Jeff. This is a guy that played college football and he didn't really start pitching until his senior year. Um, you're lying like down. Like Right and, and, he, and he didn't play college because he's in uh because he's in uh he's twenty years old. He didn't play college ball. He's twenty. He's twenty. He's fucking twenty years old. His wow. name is AJ Smith Shoyer Shaver. I saw that name out there. I'm like, who the fuck is that? That's I don't know him. So yeah, nobody did. He 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 started he started an A ball this year. He's pitched like uh, only a couple dozen innings. And he might be starting on Friday for the Braves. I should read those minor league books that I buy every year. I buy like three, at least three minor league books. He wasn't in anybody's books. And I don't know. I still don't know the guys. You know, because I read the he Mets. Wasn't in, he wasn't in anybody's books. I read Miami guys. You know, I, read, I read the Mets. That's in, I guess I should, uh, eh, why not? I paid the money for the book. I should probably take a look at it, huh? I'm saying he wasn't in any. He wasn't, yeah. he wasn't on anyone's radar. Okay, yeah. Huh. Yeah. You know what? Atlanta, they've always got, like, really fucking good pitchers, man. Do you notice that? They just, like, they've got this system in Atlanta that just produces really good pitchers. Oh, of course. Atlanta, Houston, L.A., the Dodgers. Uh, Ian Anderson, I'm still holding on to him, thinking, you know, I had him one good year, and he was fucking lights out. And, uh, for some reason, I, I he, well, I think he's broken right now. I think he just got to go through Tommy John. But uh... I mean, the Do- the Dodgers, the Dodgers find players every <laughs> year. Like you know, uh, um, think what you want about Tony Gonsolin, but I think he was like a six round draft pick. I think Bobby Miller was a seventh round draft. I don't know. Yeah, they're another one. Bill, Miller might have been a first round, but he dropped to, to late in the round. Where the Dodgers as playoff and World Series winners they slowly begin them. But man, they, every year they find them, or maybe not that not they find them, they develop them every year. Atlanta yeah, looks good. Them. That's the thing, though. That's the problem with the Cubs. The Cubs, Bay, the Cubs have a hard time developing people so much. Yeah, Tampa Bay yeah. develops pitchers. Yeah. You know, fuck Tampa. Uh, uh, Tampa Bay will take someone else, or, or even Dodgers will take someone else's castaway and turn them into a pitcher. It's like, oh, well, there you are. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just know, a culture. It's that's what's called culture. You, uh, you rate these organizations on how well they draft, but if you can develop well, you know, it makes more of your draft picks look good. One hundred percent, right? You know, what you're doing is you're adding value you're not, to any trade. If, if, if you have to move somebody, if you develop them into a good player, and you have to move somebody, Jesus Christ! I mean, you're taking somebody who's maybe a six round draft pick, and you're going to trade him. And put them in a package for somebody who's fucking elite. You know it's what I mean? A, it's a chicken and it's a chicken and egg argument. It's not a chicken and egg argument. I, it, it, or uh, development is, is way more important than than skill set. Yeah. Especially now, because I think you know you're seeing that the draft is shorter. You don't need what uh, Piazza was taking with sixty second round. They don't they don't go sixty two rounds anymore. And I think it's because most teams have the same information and the, you know the analytics so they don't need as many rounds but you still have to do something with them when when you you know after you take them and some teams are you know like my team is it's just not that good at it you know i mean right. we've got some hitters up that look like they're going to be okay i don't I, I don't know i don't know if Beatty or the antos are going to be stars or anything like that the catcher looks really good but uh, there's no pitching on the horizon that i know of really and there's nothing noteworthy i mean i you know, I read through all the 30 names they got in each of the books. And, and, you know, you read the paragraphs and after, you know, like, nah, that doesn't sound like anything more than, 
bring a guy up and start for three weeks and uh, maybe he'll, he'll be a middle reliever. You know, like, it's nothing Lou, exciting. Lou, 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 you can skip the books. Just go to the, <laughs> Lake, the Dodgers page and see and look at their NAs and look who's the highest rostered NAs and just pick them up. And go and do the same thing with Atlanta, and do the same thing with Tampa Bay. It's all crowdsourced for you. Like they'll, 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 they'll these are the NAs available, and here are the ones that the rest of Yahoo's looking at. And you just take the highest ones, and that's all you have to fucking do. And I remember well, that the Bobby that Miller Luke, saying it to everybody else too. <laughs> I remember that Bobby Miller sounded good to me. You know what I what I read. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he's not like an overpowering kind of pitcher, right? He's uh, no, no. What are you talking about? He he sits he sits ninety nine a hundred. Oh, he does. Yep. I didn't know he threw that hard. He's a flamethrower. Yeah. Uh, see. Hey, yeah. I, uh, this is my time of the day where I am going to uh, take the dog out real quick. All right. I'll be right back. Talk I'll amongst just, yourselves. I'll be right back. I'll just go over the hitters and, you know, you know them all. So Acuna is still on top as far as hitters. For Sombrero, see if they have another one in there. That looks like it. Gags have Semyon, and uh, Spears got Freeman, Freddie Freeman, I don't know, uh, Satch is Matt Olson, the usual suspects, I'm sure we'll find him, Jordan, let's see, Cows have Betts. Yeah, you know, when you take, when I, when I, after the draft, you take a look at Bill's lineup, I'm like, how did that happen? How how do we let that how do we let that lineup happen? Yeah, it's crazy because Dever he has Devers too. Unbelievable! It's sick, dude. Yeah. It's it's uh, how do how how how? <laughs> Anyways, and even like the guy that maybe he didn't think he could afford, you know, Trey Turner. He's having as he's having a worse year than anybody could even imagine. You know. Yeah. He won't continue to have a bad year. I don't see how there's any way. You know, I mean, he's who, who has turn. him? That's not your guy, right? No, no, yeah. no. He'll be fine. So like Satch or uh, Knockers, maybe? No, no. He traded him. Uh, Spear. I think Spear has him. No, Trey Turner will be fine. Yeah. Otherwise, nothing makes any sense. Right. Um. I mean, he has speed. I mean, when, when you have a, it's, it's one thing if you're a slugger like a, like a, um. Uh, uh, Jeff was talking about Schwarber earlier. You know, you can get in a rut, but speed, speed is the antidote. Like it, that, you create higher Babbitt. Yeah. Um, uh, um, you get more counting stats because you can steal a base and then score from second. So um, uh, uh, speed is a, a yeah. great equalizer. Yeah, a L- little less, a uh, little more room for error. Is what you're saying. Right, right. And uh, Alonzo is a, is a daddy. I know this gets to be kind of rote after a while because these are the year-long stats, but I kind of like to remember who's on people's teams. I, I'm not really good at that. And uh, Knockers have Aaron Judge, who's listed as day-to-day. I don't know what that's about. I haven't heard anything. Oh, he, were you really? He ran through the fucking wall. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Kept I playing the Dodgers the other night. He was going after uh, – he was going uh, um, a deep drive in right field, and he literally ran through the wall. Oh, jeez. I didn't see it. Yeah, um, I don't think he's hurt. I don't think he's. I don't think he's. Uh, uh, um, I don't. It didn't seem like there was that much concern, but he's getting a couple of days off. And Rosa Reina has come up here in the top half of the page for the Knockers. I should have said that Daddy's also have Adolis. And then uh, there's your guy. All right, Shohei, the hitter. Let's yeah, play. finally doing something. Yeah, he was on fire this month. Yeah, here's Satch, Olsen, Goldschmidt, and Devers, who's not on the top half of the page, but he's not far below, I'm sure. Oh, hey, okay, so to the to the point earlier, Lou, look at these names. All these guys, there's a couple outliers, very few, though, and, and the Otani outlier doesn't count because he should have been a top 100 hitter. They're all preseason. If you look at this page, they're all preseason, top 50, 60, 70, right? Yeah, yeah. Except for Otani. As a hitter, yeah, but that's bullshit because that's he, weird. Yeah, that that that's some kind of anomaly. Now you have a guy like India who was who was uh um who was outside the top hundred, and then there's two other guys I can't see right now. There's two other guys on the list. There might be two other guys um that I can't see that's up right now that are in the top twenty five that weren't uh, weren't inside the top hundred, right? 
if you go to the pitching page, it yeah, looks we'll do that next. And I, I know what you're saying. It's uh, different. All of these guys would have commanded some sort of uh, bidding in the in the auction, right? I mean, like 100. percent Exactly. None of these guys are going to go for a dollar. <laughs> Exactly. But here's the thing, though. In years exactly. before, you'd see more pitchers in the top 10 than you're seeing hitters right now. Right now, there's a lot of hitters in the top 10. Well, that's how – that's how – that's because they score – that's because they play more often than, than pitchers. Like no, a pitcher, I'm talking about years before. Years before, you'd have more pitchers at this time right in the top 10. Oh, that's mm -hmm. interesting. But right now, it's like it's dominated by hitting. Are these you ranks – Based on our point system, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was easy. watching years before, and and, and there's like you know it's like three years ago there was like fucking pitchers were like five of the top six, you okay. know. Yeah. So I'm, it's like it's it's amazing to me how this thing is like kind of like converted over. To, you know why? Uh, probably, probably part of the reason is like uh, the um, pitchers aren't pitching. You know, five innings is kind of kind of the norm right now, and and. And uh, so a lot of pitchers are the games aren't decided when they're pulled from the game, so they're not getting the wins. Yeah, you know, and that that can factor in. Yep, but you also look at Acuna up there, and he's got twenty six stolen bases. I mean, at this point last year, thing. did he have twenty six stolen bases? Probably not. Exactly, one hundred percent. Yeah. If you look at the uh, um, starting pitching outings, you know, the four thousand eight hundred sixty that there were last year, the most common occurrence was a no decision. You know, it's roughly right. one third of the time, but it's like maybe 38 percent are no decisions. And then uh, there were actually more losses than wins, you know, but uh, the losses and wins were pretty close together. But so the least common occurrence when you have a starting pitcher go is that he gets the win. You know, next most common is uh, is uh, uh, next least common is a uh, loss. And then uh, the most common is uh, a no decision. You know, what's the common – what's the one thing that you see that sticks out a little bit here with all these players that you see? There's one guy that hasn't done something. I mean, I'm not talking triples, but uh, if you look at Jordan Alvarez, he doesn't have one stolen base, and everybody else on this fucking screen <laughs> has at least one stolen base, including Matt Olson. Who has one stolen base? He also has no caught stealing. Yeah, because he's never I tried. Like <laughs> I like he's never tried to steal. <laughs> John, you look like you're laying down again. No, I, I went to the uh, I went to I went to the page just to look at these batters that we're talking about. Well, let me finish oh, up okay. the hitters. Um, McBride's have Wander Franco. Uh, I already mentioned Rosarina, and uh, the Cows have, uh, along with Wookie Betts, they have Bobichet, the Killer Bees there. All right, so I'm going to stop the hitting. Oh, okay. Uh, before we move on, okay. So on the, on the hitter page, there's only three players out of the top 25 weren't ranked easily within the hundred, um, like easily, like in the top 70, in the top 60. It doesn't look like there's one guy on the 70s. But there's three guys with the outliers this year. Um, uh, Jonathan India is one of them, and but the other two are. Uh, uh, yeah, Yandy Diaz, right? Preseason, well, they were even a little closer. They were hundred, so they did. The people did think he could pull it off. And then Josh Young, who was a uh, 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 two thirty preseason. Texas that? Rangers third baseman. Yeah, he's having. A, he's having. A oh break yeah, out yeah. But all but all these hitters are he's doing exactly what I think Brett Beatty could do. Yeah, no, he's a, he's he's had a breakout season. Young is sure. on McBride's, right? Yeah, I remember. Well, I think it's just last. I think it was just last year I went to uh, – I think I did the FAAB bidding on Young. Maybe it was two seasons ago. And uh, Spear uh, – not Spear. Uh, McBride's got him. And I was like, ah, what are you going to do? I mean, I was just going to hold him anyway. I wouldn't have played him, you know, to try to trade him or something. But uh, right. McBride's got him, and now he's like – he's kicking ass. He's doing and, and that lineup, that lineup with counting stats, playing for Texas, that's huge. Corey Seager. I mean, that's, that lineup's killer. They're leading MLB Marcus in Semien. runs, right? Marcus Semyon, what's that? I think they're leading MLB in runs. Yeah, that's the last. That's a that that's a fierce lineup for sure. Marcus Semyon, that turned that uh that uh that poach turned out really well for you. I saw that too, and I wanted to do it, but you had a higher priority in the uh, um, preseason when you poached Simeon. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I wanted that. I saw it. You got it. That was a good. That was a great call. He wasn't. Would have thought Nathan Eovaldi would be the top pitcher right now. Exactly. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. If you look at the list for that we were just on, all those guys are top 10, 20, 30, 40. Look at some of the look at the preseason ranking of some of these guys. You got yeah. Framber Valdez, who's at seven, and that's only two pitchers in the top ten of all players. That's crazy to me. Then Shane McClanahan at 14, he's had a little bit of a dip because he was like top of the list for the longest time. And Stroman's all the way up to fourth now for Spear. Yeah, Stroman made a big jump. And Wardo dropped uh, a little Garrett bit on Cole the rankings was, here. Garrett Cole's like right there, but Zach Gallon doing okay still. Uh, Joe Kelly, Merrill Kelly, or Joe, Joe Ryan, Merrill Kelly. I mean, there's just a lot of pitchers here that you didn't think would be where they're at. I mean, look at all those hundreds and two hundreds. This is this is pretty crazy looking. I mean, like Joe yeah. Ryan, Merrill Kelly, Mitch oh, Keller. Yeah. Eduardo Rodriguez is one I, I mean, forgot to talk about being on, injured. Yeah. He went to the IL. Yeah, Merrill Kelly, exactly. Mitch Keller, Edward Eduardo Rodriguez. You know, the, oh, he's the, on the, the IL now, dude. I, I got fast. I got fast for that. a dollar. You know, Justin uh, Steele. Dude, look at look at how about, exactly Steele. I was putting Kyle more stock into Wisniewski, and uh, Steele turned out to be the better pitcher. Kyle Kyle Gibson was. Preseason 1,658th ranked pitcher. And he's a top 25. Yeah. And he's available. <laughs> I know. I, I dropped him. <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's wild. The, the, the pitching landscape, uh, um, it definitely, there's, uh, it, it's. Uh, this is, it, this it, is it, crazy. Honestly, the, prog- the experts did not see, did not get it right. Well, right it's, it's Major League Baseball making a rule to speed up the pitching, and uh, basically the hitters are being able to stay on time with a little bit better now, you know? But, but, but no, no, but the change, it's not necessarily the change, that, uh, uh, whether it's the swing, the pendulum swing to the batters, the hitters. I'm just talking about how preseason, these guys are out, who are on the top 25, and what are we, are they the third through their way through the season? Yeah. These guys weren't even – they basically were, were unranked. You know what I mean? As far as like 12 team leagues. Mm-hmm. Oh, Merrill Kelly is, is, a, is and uh, Mitch Keller right there. The two, 236, 281 is what they thought they would be. Right. And yet exactly. here they are both in the top 50. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other way to look at it is that there's going to be a whole lot more turnover. And this top half of the page on the pitching side than there will be on the hitting side. So Agreed. Agreed. And I'll tell you what, if the Cubs had a bullpen, Justin Steele would probably have about three more wins. How long is – Oh, so he had the four we don't, like, we, don't like, we don't like the Cubs' bullpen? Ah, uh, the bullpen's fucking shady. I don't know, dude. I think Alberto uh, – I always have his name wrong. Alzalei? Alzalei. He's been on fire. That Assad kid, man. He, he hasn't oh. been walking any. He hasn't been walking anybody. He's been striking out guys. Leader, uh, Leader Junior. Um, he's got one. He's got great Sierra. Great, uh, great counting. Like uh, great uh, strikeouts per ball. You know, walks. Their bullpen's not bad. In fact, their well, maybe they're just good. running Steele's fucking starts then. Their 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 bullpen's been good the last couple of years. That's when it's you been know, one of their races. I glance down here at all the strikeouts and walks, and there's really not a guy that. That stands out as like okay, he's getting a little lucky, you know. Like they they're all solid looking, you know. I mean, Stroman's not a big strikeout guy, but all these ratios are pretty good, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a he's a ground ball pitcher that's that problem that looks like he might have developed a, a a change up that is is um um is working for him. So, well, to finish this well, up. Uh, Satch has Christian Javier and uh, Logan Webb. Those guys are not uh, bargain basement pitchers, but but uh, you got Logan Webb for eight bucks. That's because I ran out of money. You got a deal on that guy. But <laughs> maybe you didn't think they'd be in the top dozen either. Um, 
I, I, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. Just you know, Gaussman for for you. Yeah, let's play. Are we got Gaussman. He's pitching well. All right, done with the pitchers. All right, I'm gonna bring up. I'm gonna share the screen on. Uh, oh, time uh, out! Time out! All right, time out. You guys never talk about relievers, and I think that's a significant part of the scoring in this league. So let's see who. Why don't you ever talk about relievers? Because neither one of us have any good luck with them. <laughs> <laughs> I think you you need to talk about relievers. That they 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 get the most points per pitch in our league. All right. Well, I'll bring up. The you know relief. what? To be honest with you, this year my relief game has not been that bad. Um, well, just try, okay, okay. Let's I'm, I'm always them. keeping around four of them, and I'm hoping that I can always like. You keep that's you one keep thing. That's one of the reasons why I'm yeah. keeping on to Lorenzen is that. Um, uh oh, what happened here? Uh, oh, one oh, of the reasons why I'm keeping on to, to Lorenzen is that, uh, you know, if if they get a couple pitchers back or whatever, and he goes back to relief role, he's a great fucking one two inning guy. You know, and he's actually pitching good as a starter. But 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 you you I mean maybe I should maybe I should keep my mouth shut. But you guys you guys not focusing on relievers is I think it's a miss. Stop it. You know what? Relievers suck. You're absolutely right. Deserve zero attention. Let's move on. Oh I no! Sorted, this I is caught these, on tape forever. <laughs> I sorted these relievers by by saves. We could do it by holds too. It'd be nice if we could do it by save hold points, but we don't we don't have that. But uh so class A has the most saves. Oh, that guy is fucking great. I well here's the thing though, you've got class A. You got the best reliever in the game. I get that. And then you got Jordan Romano, which I fucking had one year and I fucking didn't hold on to him. But my fucking guy is this Estevez dude from the Los Angeles Angels, man. There's some deals on this list. There's some no names. No there's a bunch of guys that that you know, I spent up for Class A. I spent more. I spent money on three guys. I spent money on Machado. I spent money on Corbin Burns. They both been busts. And I spent money on Class A. And uh, uh, just because going into the season, that like, he seemed like one of the unicorns, where he was like for sure in line for saves. You can always find saves. Always find saves. So you really don't have to spend up on it. You look at this list. I I didn't even know half of these names before the season began. To be honest with you, yeah. um, and uh, um. You can like, 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 all right. Who can we talk about here? Uh, let me see if I can see. Um, uh, you have class A. Um, there's Bautista for the cows, Jordan Romano is your guy. I gave up on Alexis Diaz too soon. Ah, he was troublesome, no doubt, dude. Yeah, he started off the season, he fucking wrecked me. But he's like made a resurgence, which like fucking bothers me. <laughs> I picked a guy, Carlos Estevez. I got off the scrap heap a month ago. Yeah, I I dropped him when uh was it Quijada? Is that his name? He was around. Yeah, but he he went down. Yeah, and then uh, all of a sudden then, he yeah. slotted right into his spot. Man, he's been like one of the best fucking relievers in the game. I actually had more relievers that I would have been happy with, like even uh, Lang, Alex Lang for the Tigers. Yeah. So I just what about kinda... Chapman? What do you think is going to happen with him? He's like stuck in Kansas, and uh, he's kind of like trade fodder, you know? Where do you think he's going to end up? I have no clue. Depends who, get, depends who gets hurt. I think, he, I think he's going to end up in Texas, to be honest with you. Depends who de depends what contender has it. Not a has bad a, call. Not a bad call. I know they've had a little problems with that that final guy, Leclerc, and uh, yeah. Smith. They tried something else now, right? So uh, all I had a feeling he was going to be good. Bednar, I had a feeling he was going to be good. He is, man. Fuck. Yeah, that's hard. that it's really hard to fucking rocky, though, man. my ass a little bit because. I gave up on him too quick. How do you take bet? I mean, you don't. It's hard. It's hard to put a put a Colorado pitcher on your staff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, I had Estevez earlier, so we're even, right? So. Yeah. 
I guess so. I actually am higher than you, so yes, yeah. we're even. Yeah. Yeah, but even. I got all of the hard start from Alexis Diaz. <laughs> I mean, I got the worst of it. You've enjoyed the most of it. Look at this. This guy, he has... Kyle Finnegan. I almost dropped him like several times. Man. But he's turned it around. Yeah, he looks okay. None of these, none of these guys. Maybe, uh, maybe Jansen has unimpressive ratio numbers, but nobody else looks but, okay. You know, here's the thing, though: if you look at the, the relief pitching and shit like that, look where their current rank is. All these guys are in the mid one, like one thirty six on to one, you know, five hundred here, within the like, you know, top group. It's just fucking strange. But like John was pointing out, the magic is, is that these guys are doing it in so few innings, right? So, right, right. They're getting the, the points for a little bit. They're not getting many points, but they're uh, they're getting them. Points per mm -hmm. inning they're is getting, good. They're getting the most juice for the. They're getting the most juice for the squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we get caught up with looking at where their current rankings are and how good the players are, as of what the way, what we want on our teams. And we don't kind of like break down how they get the points and stuff sometimes. Well, that thanks you for, know, Jeff, I, thanks Jeff, for Jeff, thanks for bringing that to my to my attention there, John. Well, that's, I'm trying to help you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Another thing you should look at too is uh, like you can go, you can sort by like the last seven days, the last fourteen days, and that's pretty. I important. do that all the yeah. time. Yeah, you know who's, who's like on fire at the time? That I'm tells sort you. of by holds. Let's just say that. I'm gonna sort it by holds. I can't. I can't see that column on here. Can you see it? Oh, it's up far, far right. Yeah, it's it's this one. It's the yeah, second yeah. to last. Yeah, the one that's all gray. Yeah. It'll it'll show the players. So uh, Eric Swanson's the top holds guy, along with Strezelicki. Those guys score points, dude. Brooke, Brooks Raley. Oh, I know. I look for these guys. Why dude, they're, they're a year Ferguson. Where, where, there, there is there uh, for uh, for for every, uh, there are very often a holds guy can be more valuable than a, than a closure. It depends, yeah. Like it's I remember, a, uh, uh, especially, if they, especially if they bring positions to win games, like uh, like a Garrett Whitlock a couple of years ago, or uh, um, um, it will happen where some guys just it they're and and just like relievers like closure. A lot of it has to do with it's not it's not determined on them because they're not starters. It's whether they're given a lead at the end of the game that's less than three runs. So they don't have any control over that. So you could be the greatest reliever in the world, and not have counting stats because you're not given the opportunity. But always some year there's some guy that's racking up holds week after week after week after week. That's way better than than ninety percent of the reliever the closers. Swan Swanson leaves leads and holds. He's got fourteen, and I think Class A had nineteen saves, right? So yeah, and this is nineteen times four points as opposed to fourteen times three, right? So you're still you're still better off with your closer, but you, know. but you have to measure that by innings pitch too. Yeah. So what you have to do is compare the innings pitched to the the points per innings pitched. Yeah, I would think that the holds guys would have more innings than the closers. Yeah, yeah. I would okay. think so. So then, so hey, they're going to look worse. Then, right? They're going to have a lower points per inning pitch than a closer. In most right. cases, you know, when we started, when we added holds, it was after we had Andrew Miller out there and he had, we knew that he had tons of real baseball value, but there was no way to measure it. Not that the holds, holds and saves we all know are sucky stats, you know, but it's just a way to uh, uh, reward leverage, right? These guys are pitching high leverage innings. One heart, yeah, exactly. But, uh, hey, but we had no way to. Who has the most holds? It was Eric Swanson. Yeah, can you just click on that real quick? Yeah, it's tough for me because they it's uh I can't see it. <laughs> wait. Okay, wait. All right, now they're sorted by holes. And I know yeah, the top yeah. one is 14. So <laughs> what's the matter? Well, he was a free agent before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you picked up Swanson. <laughs> I love it. Where's that? That's what I'm talking. Hey, you're welcome, Jeff. I, I thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome for me leading you down this road. Uh, pick up Strizz you know, too. Caleb Ferguson Someone, didn't have the points he did. Someone owes me a beer. You're welcome. <laughs> who'd, who'd you drop? Who'd you drop? 
Estevez? Caleb Ferguson. Oh. Los Angeles oh, Dodgers relief wow. pitcher. And you know, I had Caleb Ferguson for a big part of the year, and uh, I loved him. I tried to trade him because I thought he had value. I try to try I try to tra I've been trying to trade the fucking Cardinals reliever, and um, not because he's bad, just because I want I would have kept the I would have kept uh, Caleb. To be honest with you, Caleb Ferguson, because he's going to be in high leverage situations and he's good. But Who's you the know, Cardinals he closer? Ride, he ride hot. Someone will pick up Caleb Ferguson. In my day. Is this uh, Helsley? Exactly. Who's their closer? I mean, yeah. I, you know, here's the thing though. I had him for probably about two weeks, and I didn't really fucking put him in, but one time. <laughs> I mean, my other guys had all. I, I, my other guys were fucking doing fine. I, I, I didn't have like kind of room for him, but that's that's. The, and I actually, I talked to this with about uh, me and Lou texted about this. I would be in favor, or I would vote for, or I would like to like, proffer that. Um, so we have three RP spots. I would like to add two more P spots where you can put, or maybe, just make just make them five RPs. Just make them. Uh... Or if you if you have a P slot, it's just basically an RP. I feel, all right, I feel you. Okay, fine, fine, <laughs> fine, 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 fine. I got you. exactly one hundred percent. Fair, 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 fair. What fair, if we did fair. like three RP spots and one actual closer spot? But we don't have that designation. Yeah, that's true. We don't. Yeah, that's right. dynamic. You know, uh, but um, but uh, um, here's the thing, though. You would probably want to uh, um. If you open up that Pandora's box, you probably not Pandora's box. I think it'd be fun because you, you know, all of a sudden these, these there's some fun players in the league that aren't being touched, like the Caleb Ferguson's are being like I discard you discard. He's a guy you want on your team in real yeah. life and in fantasy because he scored points in fantasy, and you want him on your real life team too. It depends and, uh, how you view these guys, these middle relievers, because I think you have to understand the evolution of the uh, roster in the beer league. We started with. Nine hitters, five starting pitchers, and a closer. Okay. And, and then when we went from uh, – we had 16 teams. Well, we had as many as 22. But when we went from 16 teams down to uh, nine the year after the Bermersky affair, <laughs> um, I knew we were going to have less teams, so we needed bigger rosters. So we kind of tried to multiply the rosters by two, but you can't quite go to two. So it was like um, we went to 14 hitters from nine. And then, uh, you know, so we so we went to two closers and eight starting pitchers at that point. You know, it, it I, I know what you're saying, like the middle relievers is a um, besides the one that qualified starting pitcher are not usable in our game. But it's untapped. It's untapped. It depends. They are it depends. usable. I but... view them. I view them personally as bench pitchers. You know, like, so we're not going to play the platoon first baseman for the Brewers because he's not going to play that very much, especially if he's uh, on the wrong side of the platoon, you know, facing, facing right. the right. But, but, oh, I agree with you. But middle relievers, I mean, if what you're saying is like, there's these guys that are just specialists, man, they, he's a seventh inning guy. And I don't feel it like that. I feel like if he was really good, if the team believed in him, he would be the closer. Or if he had the stamina, he'd be one of those five starting pitchers in the rotation. So I view all the other pitchers as bench pitchers. That, so that's that's why the rosters are constituted the way they I can't, I can't argue with what you just said. Mm -hmm. But having said that, um, uh, I, I, I don't think they're bench players per se because they get called in high-level situations all the time. Yeah, but like most high-level situations are not in the seventh inning. I mean, they're, they're, they're higher all, than, they're they're higher all than the, the time. All the time. They are all the time the seventh and eighth inning. If you, if you look at the average leverage index of these relief pitchers, it's, okay. it's it's closers. I mean, there are some exceptions. Certainly in a game, there's an exception. Sometimes it is the seventh or eighth inning, depending on the bases, situation, the outs, whatever. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. On, over the course of a season, your middle reliever is not going to have a higher leverage index than classic okay. or something like that. That's fair. But that ah. fair. All right. But I, I know what you're saying. I think as a as a game, like rotisserie, there's something to be said for it. it. You know, it does involve players that we that just don't have the value in our league. You know, but well, I think well, if you understand what the rosters came from and what the what the idea was to make I the follow. rosters bigger in the same proportion, sort of, then it might make more sense. But I follow, and and if you've caught on to me, I'm way, I'm more into pitching than hitting. So I'm like more and more pitchers, more pitchers. 
That's a my MO. I, 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 my, my eye is more, uh, uh, um, uh, um, I'm, I'm more, I'm more drawn to pitchers than hitters per se. And John, did you oh, play like little league and, and stuff like that like, when you were a kid? Pitchers, I want more pitchers. <laughs> were you, you were know, a pitcher back in the day? I pitched, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, that has a lot to do with it. Well, I, I was more of a hitter. I also think I, I just like, uh, um, I don't know. There's, there's, there's uh, the, the the pitchers run the game, man. They're like the, they're like the center of it. It starts with the pitcher, you know. Well, they get the ball in their hands, but it's catcher too. No, I'm, I'm just saying. I, I think. I think my my favorite players, like Greg Maddox, is my favorite player. Um, most of my favorite players, I love Pitt. Greg, Greg Maddox, my favorite player ever. Enough said. Yeah. And I, I can't, I can't like really pinpoint who my favorite player ever is. And that's the thing. It's like there's so many that I like. I can't pinpoint just one. My yeah, I mean, Greg, Greg Maddox is up there for me. I mean, he's up there. He's way yeah. up there. Mine are usually not the best players, usually. I mean, they have to be at least good, but they don't have to be the, the superstar. You know, I tend to like the uh, – like on the Mets, I tend to – you know, I like McNeil and Nimmo the most. And well, I don't Nimmo's really, fucking badass. I don't really care for Lindor or Alonzo very much, you know. So, well, <laughs> well, a lot of it's flash. It's like, what can you do? I mean, well, it's like a lot of those – I mean, who's got the better – I mean, bring up the – bring right up – Bring up the Mets right now and all their batters, <laughs> and let's see where they rank. You know who? And just you share know who the second, screen. You know, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. Can you guys you do it? You guys might be able to guess who's my who's my second favorite ba- uh, pit, our second favorite baseball player. Nolan Ryan, Super Joe Sharper. Go <laughs> 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 doing. <laughs> Rookie of the Year, 1979, Cleveland Indians. Who was Dude, this? Dude, that shit super at the Joe draft Joe. killed oh. me. I thought I was going to get a spit take out of you. <laughs> Dude, when we were playing it, like, okay, so for anybody who's listening who doesn't know what the fuck we're talking about, uh, which is probably maybe one, two, um, there's this game we play. We got 20 questions on a baseball player back in the day, you got 20 questions to ask all the right questions to narrow it down. I mean, you have less of a chance of getting your wordle <laughs> than you do this, you know, more of a chance. You mean to say <laughs> more of a chance, well, less of a chance. Yeah. 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 We have more of a chance of getting your wordle. Yes. So anyway, I mean, it just, and then you like, what was it? Three questions in. Yeah. And, I was uh, away. And uh, yeah. So you know, here's the thing. Well, if you got people, I fell, I kinda... fell out. I fell out of my chair, Jeff. Oh, I know you did. <laughs> I know you did. But when you and we played this game when when it was Chris's fiftieth birthday party, we created this game sitting around the fucking like little fire and shit. Drinking beers and just like enjoying the like Arizona night, and uh, we came up with this game because it was just bullshit. We just like didn't know what to fucking talk about other than baseball. And we're just like, okay, let's do a twenty <laughs> questions baseball game. In twenty twenty, this was right. This is right, right before everything got. Locked yeah, in. it was exactly two weeks or one week before the whole complete shutdown of America. And I felt so fortunate because we got to go and watch a live baseball game that year where nobody else got to. Yeah. Oh, pretty cool. I'll anyway, be there next time. But I'll be, there ne- I'll be there next time, Jeff. Oh, dude, we got to do it again. We I, we have to do it again. I mean, it's just it was just like we had like assignments almost. It's like I bought the place that we stayed in. It was like five bedrooms. Or four bedrooms in a like uh it was like five bedrooms. Oh no, it's four bedrooms and one had double beds in it. That was the only cool, problem. Cool pond, pond's good for you. But anyway, it was it was just like you know, eight hundred bucks for the weekend. So I mean, if you got five guys, that's like hundred and twenty bucks per person for the whole weekend, which is almost like forty bucks a day. It's crazy. It, you know, we had to stay in Gilbert, which was a little farther out. 
But I mean, you know, when I took care of the house, fucking Phil took care of uh, the car. You know, Chris Larkin took care of a bunch of tickets. And then uh, Will was with us and uh, and Paul. And they took care of like food and fucking alcohol and shit. Libations. Yeah, we all fucking pitched in and we just, it was a great time. And we, we, uh, we, we also, there was nothing but rocks in the backyard because <laughs> they didn't have a lawn. So we came up, we had an in and out cup and we put it like, I don't know, about 12, 14 feet out. And you take the best rocks you got and you try to throw them in the cup. And it was just like, we'd sit there bullshit when we're trying to throw rocks in a cup. It's like and heavy that pong. Was, that was our new game, Rock Cup. <laughs> rock, rock Cup. That might have been a very early game, you know. If, uh, I can imagine Caveman could have. <laughs> yeah, <around> that was <laughs> actually the first sport. Right. The Crow Magnet Man. Right. Mm -hmm. Rock Cup. Mm -hmm. There's cave drawings. <laughs> cave drawings with Rock uh, Cup. With the, yeah. Hey, you guys want to know who's like the leaders of all baseball right now? Check this out. I'm going to fucking share the screen. Boing. War players. Wando Franco, 3.6. Defensive war. Asyong Kim, 1.6. Wow. Uh, batting average, Luis Arias. Man, that was the one that really stung me in the ass when you guys like bit him up and I couldn't fucking. Like, he didn't get pulled up that much, but listen. Oh, no, he got pulled up late when I had no money. Okay. And what I wanted to keep him. I picked him up off the scrap heap last year. Yeah. And uh, you want him? him and I him. really wanted to keep him, man. I I'll, should have brought him you. up early. You want him back? He's batting three eighty or three eighty five. You want? I'll trade him to you. Really. Three ninety two on this. For more pitchers. Okay, three ninety two now. <laughs> Let's, uh, do another, tonight. Let's, Jeff, Let's do another real time. Okay, you did a real time <laughs> waiver wire. Let's do a real time trade right now. <laughs> Who would you give me? Well, hold on. Let me look at my fucking. I'm doing right now with the fucking share and everything is covering up the. You know what though area this, I need to. This is this is this is not going to work because we we we'll, uh, I'm not familiar enough with your team, but we'll, we'll we'll talk about this. At least at least we can say it was initiated in real time. Um, All right, wait, I mean, let me take you up, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who you have, so I I, I don't know where to start. Jeff, right. offer him Eric Swanson for Emmanuel Class A. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're supposed to say Luis Arias is what you're supposed to say. All right, oh. slugging percentage oh, on base percentage, Luis Arias, of course. Uh Aaron Judge has got the uh the OPS and the slugging. Anthony Bolplay has played more games than anybody else as a rookie. That's interesting. They dropped him down the line that they were leading him off, but I think he's dropped down to late to the bottom half of the lineup now. Yeah. Bottom four. Run score is Marcus Simeon. It's one of the reasons why he's way at the top. Badass. Yeah. Hits Bo Bichette. Not to be considered, not to be confused. There's no I in Simeon. <laughs> uh, doubles Freddie Freeman, 23. He's a doubles machine. Him and Badass. fucking Castellanos. Those two guys hit more doubles than anything because you know what? You're just not strong enough to hit it out of the ballpark sometimes. <laughs> well, Castellanos played in Detroit when the walls, when the fences were way out there. He's still he doing the same shit. He oh, hit a bunch of doubles in fucking Wrigley played. Field. He hit a bunch of doubles in, in, in the Phillies. Wrigley. It totally translated to home runs in Wrigley. Well, he hit, yeah, he, he got off to a good start in Wrigley. Uh, triples. Who knows? A bunch of people have four. Pete Alonzo, my boy, 21 home runs. Uh, runs batted in. Can I click on this and fucking find out? Nope. Got two tied at 51. Uh, maybe you guys can find that out. Uh, Juan Soto's got the most walks. I'll just be, it'll just be a mystery. 
Yeah, there we go. Figure it <laughs> out. Figure it out on your own. We got to tell you everything. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez has the most strikeouts. He struck out 81 times so far this year. Wait, that's a bad that was- thing, though. <laughs> Dude, we're like what, 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 what a quarter of the way through the league through the year and and he struck out 81 times that translates over to 320 fucking strikeouts no it's a we're a little past the third it, so little. oh third two, but that's still quarter. 220 yeah yeah Lou, you broke you broke even on poaching this year you got the steal for the 40 dollars simian and you might have gotten the bust for $40 on a TS car. Yeah, Semyon, none of those guys were really great prices. Semyon, I mean, at least the Semyon that we thought. He was no, be. I mean, Semyon was no, what, I, like 40 I liked him at 40 I liked him at 40 There was Ooh. another one. There was another one that wasn't. Some of my hitters weren't great prices. I can't remember the well, It was TS car Hernandez. You, you poached him off of me. And I didn't Who? protect him at 40 But I would have taken Semyon at 40 Who did I poach off you? Hey, Teoscar Hernandez. Oh, Teoscar, yeah, yeah, forty-one, right? Was he forty-one? Yeah, and I would, and I didn't protect him because I didn't think anybody was going to take him. But, well, uh, yeah, I, I thought the same thing with uh, what's his name from Milwaukee, uh, former Marlins outfielder. What's the Yelich? You know, Yelich has fourteen stolen bases. He's got fourteen stolen bases this year. Yeah, isn't that wild? You know what? I haven't even looked at his fucking numbers yet all year long because he's not my guy anymore. You know, yeah. when we when we dropped from 12 teams to 11 for this year, hopefully just for this year, the yeah. that didn't help my aggressive poaching on, like, high-priced players like, like to Oscar, 41. I, I was worried about that. I was like, mm, I don't know if I would have done that then. I don't know what happened, I, you know, what happens to yeah, that value. You, but you were right on Marcus Semyon. That was, that was a step yeah. for one hundred percent worth. There was another did. one that was high priced too. I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Malcastle. That wasn't high priced. That was only like twelve. Acuna has a runs created fucking thing here going on, like runs and RBIs kind of combined. Or I don't know if it's combined or what. The That's that is. Bill James formula. That's the times on base multiplied by total bases divided by plate appearances. That's its yeah. basic form. Nice. I told you. That's the one that I. I I like it, but I don't quite I'm not quite comfortable with it. You know, I can't wrap my arms around it that great. So So check this out. Asturi Ruiz has the most hit by pitches and he has the most stolen bases. So do you think this kid is like leaning into some shit and then fucking getting on base and stealing a base and sh- that that's like creating runs, man. That's a guy you want on your team. Yeah. Great. Yeah, hopefully he's doing that, I guess. I would imagine. I mean, that's. I mean, if uh, here's the thing: if you get hit by a pitch, okay. I thought that. Hit by twelve. Not to say that he's stolen a base every time he's got hit by a pitch, but to get on base like that, and then you've got the most stolen bases at twenty eight, and he's been hit by a pitch twelve times. Who knows, man? I mean, I wonder how many times he's stolen a base after he's gotten hit by a pitch. That's all I'm saying. Hit by a pitch is such a mindset. You guys got you got there's guys like Rizzo that stand around top of the plate or who are oh, going to get hit. Yeah, Rizzo so, hits also, all the time. Wilson Contreras gets hit all the time. I saw Swansby last night, um, um, on a soft curve dive out of the way. What if he's just staying? <laughs> just call him Swansby. Going for the fucking team, dude. <laughs> Swansby. You mean it's Dansby Swanson? Yeah. You said Swansby. Oh, never mind. Well, you know what I meant. We call him Swansby. What, I thought that's what you guys <laughs> were calling him on Chicago. In the, hood, in the hood, we call him Swansby. It's a thing. I like it. I knew exactly what you're actually, talking about. That, that actually should be his nickname. Swansby. Oh, no, we call him that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's hey, funny. Jeff. Great. Yeah. This is the first time. This is the first time you've heard that. No, I yeah, well, no, yeah, yeah. It's the first time I've ever heard Swansby. Yeah, first time I heard it. But I knew who you were talking about right away, so it's good. Yeah, exactly. Me too. <laughs> so Jeff, I'm going to point out the strikeouts per nine inning pitched. This stat gets my award for for too many decimal places, too many right unnecessary <laughs> decimal places. I mean, like. Maybe one. Maybe you could have fourteen point six. Do you need to? Do you need to know what's fourteen point five nine eight? 
Spencer mean, Strider is a, is a paging Dr. Satchel guy, right? Yes, he is. Is, is George Kirby too? I don't know. I don't know who's, I don't got, know. who's got George Kirby? Kirby's hurt. I think I think Capital maybe. But uh, um, he's hurt. Yeah, what he? a year he had up until that point. Tyler Wells. You know, I, I Norm threw me a pretty goddamn good deal. And I couldn't do it because he wanted Wilson Contreras, and uh, I've got Jansen down, and basically is like that would have left me with one catcher, and I can't do that. But pick he was Tomas offering Nito. me Tyler Wells, and I was like, all right, well, fuck it. Yeah, pick up Tomas Nito. Problem solved. No, <laughs> he's out of work right now, man. <laughs> At best for home run, Judge nine point two. That's pretty cool. At bats for a strikeout, Luis Arias, 18.5. That kid don't strike out. He puts the bat on the ball. I like that pool that you did during the COVID year when you had, you know, predict the, uh, you didn't have to predict who it was going to be, but just what the amount was that was going to lead. Yeah. Major League Baseball. That was a good pool. <laughs> that was kind of fun because you know what? It was a, it was a half year. I mean, it was like, I mean, 60 games or whatever so you just like it made you think yeah you had to go like a little more extreme in your uh, guesses you know like you couldn't just, you couldn't just take 60 divided by 162 times the amount of homers that's going to lead the league in a normal year you had to go you had to go more extreme gambler, gambler spare gambler spear won it that year yep yeah they won it during the covid think, year in fact jeff i think you had the highest point lead and uh, he caught you at the end yeah that was pretty cool. Games. That was a fun little fucking exercise. I can't remember how I did it, but I mean, we could probably do that. Like, I have like a little like side thing, and uh, you know, have a guesstimate of what you think the, the, the. Yeah, I mean, I think these year long pools, like I, you know, the uh, prediction pool hasn't really caught on too well, but. Maybe we can get a few more people in it. You know, it'd be more, we have like four people in it usually, you know. And, yeah, because it's a total random thing. I mean, you're just making a prediction pool. So I think I might have the, uh, on this computer, I think I might have the uh, the word uh, docu document that I made that on. So I'll have to look, but I, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll check into it. Hey, Lou, you know what else happened that COVID year? The first year I played? I was in third place until the last week, and you passed me the last week for third place. What was your first year? Was it 19? No, 20. Wasn't 20, it? Okay. Yeah. It was 20. And then uh um and then uh I was in third place and you caught me, you put me, you knocked me out of the money at the last fifth week of the game. So what I came in fourth and you came in fifth? Yeah. Or fourth and you came in third, something like that. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, I remember. And then it was, and then then the next year. So that was a weird year to get indoctrinated to it. And then the next year they had the sticky finger thing, where it's like, uh, um, no, was that last year? Anyways, uh, there, there, it's been hard. In, and now with the whole pitch clock, it's uh, every time I come up with a strategy, it has to be scrapped at the beginning of the year because the whole league's changed. For instance, or when I first started, like I thought, okay, this is. I'm like, I know how to do this. I'm gonna get every American League. Um, leadoff hitter because because in the National League the pitchers had hit back in that day right twenty twenty so day. way back in that day when pitchers hit I'm like well of course I'm gonna take all the American League leadoff hitters and then I'm gonna take all the all the National League starting pitchers and then in particular and so I'm like okay starting pitchers uh, uh, pitch uh, face pitchers American League hitters. Um, uh, are, are protect aren't aren't following you know pictures so they're so I figured counting stats increase and then uh and then I would go even further and like okay what division the American League East looks really weak this year or the National League League, League looks very weak so I'll get National League pitchers you know what I mean and that was a strategy that kind of kind of kept me in the game of someone who's just learning how to play with you guys and uh, um um it worked for me because I was able to put up some numbers at least stay competitive based on that philosophy alone. You know, well, how how the other mechanisms mechanisms of the league work? I had no idea. But I'm like, okay, I'm gonna national American League leadoff hitters, National League pitchers in weak divisions. 
And now you can't even do the you can't even do that because it's DH, and you can't pick weak divisions because it's an equal schedule for everything. Balanced schedule. <laughs> so all all the things I relied on the first couple of years, um, um, I have to reorganize again. I know I know um, you like the uh, pitching aspect of in the rotisserie league, right? Because it's more open, not not as not as starter heavy as our league. But do you? How about the stolen bases, like? In our league, stolen bases are good, you know, uh, but it's not like the uh, windfall that it is in rotisserie. So do you right. do you well, like that? Do you miss that? Where well, it's a category winner. I've never played rotisserie, so oh, I don't know. I thought, I thought you did. I thought you were. I don't know. Never played it. Oh. I was in. Uh, We're actually kind of playing it now, and it's like goes week to week rotisserie. So rotisserie is basically just getting the most points for the week. Instead of going head to head on certain fucking objectives, like okay, that's not entirely true because a rotisserie league. Let's say you swap fifty bases this week. That fifty bases is going to count towards your next week and the week after that and the week after that because you're compiling year long statistics. In this league, you let's say you score what get fifty. You stole fifty bases this week. Well, doesn't matter next week. Right, right, right. But it's like a week to week rotisserie. You still have to like get more points than the guy next to you it's not like you're going head to head about like uh you know like the most hits the most fucking uh doubles triples home runs you know you're not winning categories you just have to put up the most points for the week we just kind of like break the rotisserie for the season up into fucking each week and give people wins and losses i think there's rotisserie leagues that have like head to head where they're just like you know, the guy who won the most categories for the week gets the win for the week. Right. That, you know. what call us, that's what we're a rotisserie did. hybrid. Yeah. But there's no doubt that rotisserie is more difficult than what we do, you know, because oh, we, yeah. we care about one number. Imagine if each guy actually had five numbers and you had to kind of, you know, like you had to, all you need to know when somebody offers you a trade is like, I'm going to get this value and then, uh, you know, I'm going to give up this, you know, it's, it's a lot simpler than rotisserie. It's like, you know, some trades that look, that would look crazy to us could make sense in a rotisserie league, you know? Oh, yeah. I, think that's why, I think that's why trading would be easier in a rotisserie league because you have a need. It's like, fuck it. I'm, I need steals and I'm going to trade. I have five, I have five really good pitchers. But I'm here's the thing though. That's up. more of a head to head for up. the week. I'm willing to overpay for a category because because it's all the levers are different. It's like it's like I've got wins. Um, I'll overpay in what would look like an overpay in our league, which is what you're saying. Yeah, like if you um, were, let's say, like in a 12 team rotisserie league, you're like in uh, tenth in stolen bases, and you can see that if you had like ten more stolen bases, you'd be in fifth or something like that. You know, like so it could make sense for you to trade. You know, a trade that would look nuts to us, but you know, it might make sense, especially later in the year. You know, if you if you've got a sizable lead and runs batted in or something like that, and home runs, then you might who's, leading the of, who's leading the league in stolen bases right now? What's that? What's that? What's who's leading the league in stolen bases right now? Oh, in our, in our league, yeah, uh, stolen well, bases in ML in MLB. Oh, uh, oh, okay. oh, that's that's uh, that's Asturi Ruiz, uh, Oakland. <laughs> I picked him up and I dropped him like an idiot. And is he is he currently rostered? Oh yeah, I think so. Or else maybe this is the for number. I'm about to get this. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. But that's the big difference. If he's, now. if he's out there in our league, in a rotisserie league, he would rostered. never be out there. You know what I mean? Like, no, yeah, Bizzotti. One hundred right, exactly. <laughs> but you know, we go we go deeper into starting pitchers, Jeff right? Just pick them up. We go deeper into starting pitches. We have starting pitches that are rostered that Don's a little that gun really have never had. Swanson incident. What say this? I said you're a little gun shy after I picked up Aaron Swanson so quick. <laughs> you mean Swansby? No. Um yeah, no, that was funny. Yeah, I thought that was I funny. Had fun with it. No, that's great. It's great. I wasn't gonna pick him up. I'm glad I'm I I I actually saw I gave some I gave some uh, uh, what would you call it? actionable advice? <laughs> Let's go look at closers or really. <laughs> hey man, so you've been in the league 
now what three years? This is the fourth, right? Yeah. This is the this is the fourth season. Fourth, fourth season. So is uh, for all the uh, fantasy baseball uh, leagues you've been in, how would you consider this league? I was in one other league for two years before this, and that was circa uh, probably nine, uh, 2017, 2018. and that was just uh, that was just uh, um, uh, a redraft league. No, scratch that. That was a two keeper league, two keeper okay. league, and um, and uh, um, my first venture into it, and and you know I didn't know, and these guys were good. I mean. It, they were good, not as good as you guys, but they were good. There were there were a couple of guys that knew the fuck what they were going on, and uh, like and you learn from watching how they operate. Um, but I remember this season. Um, it's so funny, and now everybody's on this shit. But um, I, I remember stumbling upon, and I didn't do any research. But one thing that people talk about was fan graphs. You guys look at fan graphs. Yep, I'm talking I'm about there every day, every day. Okay, exactly. right, right. I think uh, right. Yeah. right. So so uh fan graphs. Oh no no, I'm sorry, not that baseball savant. Oh you got fan graphs. <laughs> I'm talking about baseball savant. You guys look at that? Occasionally, no. but not not too much. Yeah. Okay, then I'm gonna shut up right now. So anyway, <laughs> well, let me write I that shit trick. down. I learned a little trick and that was like one of the two things I was looking at. I'm like, oh, and that's how I found Aaron Judge off the waiver wire my first year when he was rookie of the year and hit fucking fifty home runs. Yeah, so I, I got lucky. There's there, there's certain there's there's ways to not. You don't have to. I don't spend any time reading articles. I sh- I like reading articles, um. But I, I uh, there's a there's so many ways to source this stuff out though that everyone else is doing the work. For you. Yeah, I think like savant for me is like a step above what what I want, what I'm what I do. You know, it's, I don't. I, I like to look at um, outcomes, like, you know, luck. I like to factor in the luck. I, I do like to use BABIP and things like that, or if the guys hit the opposite field, hard contact. I look at that, but they take it even a step above that, right? They're looking at actual, you know, exit velocities or spin rates, and that's an area I don't get into. I think it's interesting. I, I, I like I, to look at it, but I don't – I don't – I guess, like, if I – like, um, one measure of control is, like, balls – ball percentage strike percentage and i still don't believe i don't believe in it because i just think that you can throw a ball and it could be a good it could be a good idea and i wouldn't want that to like count against the pitcher's control you know what i mean so it's right I, i'm i think there's probably there there are guys that are a lot smarter than i am that use that stuff and would probably kick my ass but i don't i stop at that right before that level I'll tell you where I stop. I stop at uh, at, uh launch angle and exit velocity or and, and barrels barrel rate. I think barrel rate will tells you a lot. If you look at the barrel rate leaders, that are, those are generally the best hitters in like would fucking be in Jake league. fucking Burger. Yeah, one hundred percent exactly. Holy fucking shit, that guy. Exactly, exactly. I had him on my any roster for a long fucking time. That's another guy fucking like kicked to the curb over the last year. God damn it. Yeah, burger, bur- burgers, uh, burgers, uh, stack, uh, savant page is off the hook. Like it's like his barrels per plate appearance and his uh, um, um, his hard hit percentage and that stuff. Dude, That's, those are numbers. Guy, all he does is crush the ball out of the park or get a double. Yeah, you know, and he's, and, faster, it, and he's faster than you think he is. He's one of the fastest players behind behind like Tim Anderson. He's one of the fastest players on the Sox. Believe it or he's, not, he's athletic. Yeah, I would never yeah. have thought that. But man, I tell you what, he just hit a hit a grand slam home run to end the game the other day. Don't like yeah. that kid. I like that kid. Yeah, Burger. You know what? The thing that, that held him back was he got in this like really bad leg accident. You know, he was like his broke a leg or something like that is what it was. I didn't read that. Yo, I you know. I, you know what? I think he. I think part of the victim was was the, who is he's who he's behind. Like they 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 see him as a defensive. No, player. it wasn't that. They they actually drafted him number one. He was a first round draft pick. Yes, for he sure. A, he, he was a first a round draft, draft pick. Draft but then, like right after they drafted him, I think he broke his leg or some shit, and it oh, held okay. him back like a year or two. He was like up to the year in his first year, 
like actually playing in the White Sox system. And that that held him back a little bit. But now, dude, you're seeing the player that they fucking drafted back in the first round back in those days. Is he DHing? What is he? What is he? I mean, I know he's an outfielder probably. He can right? play third no, he's base. not an outfielder. Oh. No, he's, he's not, not really he's, an outfielder. They, 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 ideally, he should be at first base when they bonds well, there. They, they drafted they him as a third baseman. Third game, he's not going to play either of those positions either. I think he's been more of a DH. A DH. But you're saying he plays third mostly if he's not a DH? I'd have to look it that's up. That's what with... they drafted him as. I oh, mean, okay, yeah, I didn't. I, I, I know. So that's little. kind of like in my head. That's where I kind of position him. But I mean, I don't know where the fuck they've been playing him. I mean, I don't like dig that far into it. But man, all I know is I see the highlights, and that dude crushes it. Is Moncada back? Yes. Okay. How's he doing? Um, I haven't been playing that not not horribly. Yes, I haven't haven't heard people spit. I haven't seen people spitting on him, but uh, I don't think he's blowing it up either. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you, Lou, but uh, this is really real <laughs> fucking cool. <laughs> Did I miss something? You're sideways again. I'm trying to look up. I'm trying to look up where Burger's playing. He's playing the Burger Fest. Mm. <laughs> I remember Moncada when he was on the Red Sox, you know, in the Red Sox minor leagues before the Sox traded for him, the White Sox. Um, he had a 462 OBP in minors. I mean, oh man, I thought, I thought when the Sox got him that they were really getting something, you know. But uh, I don't, you know, he's not, a, he's not like he's been a bad player, but. I think the White Sox right now need to strip it to the fucking bare bones, sell everybody off and then start over. They should sell their owner. Ah. Sell him up the river. No. Uh, you know, right. he's one of those guys that's just like, get him close so everybody will be into it each year and get passionate, but don't give him too much. Burns, this is an infield real quick, but yeah. He's uh he's it's like one of the things the Bulls dynasty fucking taught him. Yeah, I think I think he the minute Michael Jordan was gone, everybody left that fucking stadium and nobody was like re upping their fucking like tickets and shit. It took it not immediately, but yes. <laughs> That's exactly how it was. His good fortune with hey, Jeff, I remember walking down Damon Ave Damon and Armitage and running into people trying to give me away fucking bulls tickets like now <laughs> it's like i really don't want to drive down there <laughs> they could be the right, right. yeah the elton brand years were not good years yeah ah uh, well we there, there was that burst of light called uh um oh jesus christ number one pick chicago kid oh Derek rose yeah that looked probably pretty positive for a minute there dude yeah the thing, man, if you just let that, like, you know what, they're giving more time to goddamn fucking Lorenzo Ball than they ever gave to Derrick Rose to come back. <laughs> you know, it's like, Jesus fucking Christ, that kid's never playing basketball again. Ever. Yeah. Lorenzo Ball's done. His fucking <laughs> shit won't heal. Yeah. I've heard people talk about when uh, Derrick Rose went down in that playoff game and that literally, and that was at home, you could literally, like, People that were there will tell you that complete silence, like everything stopped. You could hear, yeah. you could barely hear people breathing. That was devastating. Yeah. You know, uh, Jordan and uh, I was going to say, Reinsdorf and Kraus didn't realize that they got lucky, like once in a lifetime lucky, or not even uh, a lifetime lucky, getting Jordan and then Pippen. Well, I think Kraus has been dead. Well, yeah, you're talking about regular, like, from Kraus yeah, has been dead for years. But, I mean, you know, they, they didn't they didn't realize that they were just very fortunate. They thought – I think they really believed that once Jordan and everybody left, they'd build another winner within a few years. They didn't realize, like, it just doesn't happen. Like, you you should have just well, kept that thing together as long as possible because it's it's just not going to happen again. And, and Number, number one. You know? They never drafted Jordan in the first place. That was Rod Thorne. Right. That's what you're saying. And and basically, they just made fillers. They drafted well around him. 
Yeah, that's think, all you needed to do, right? You just yeah. needed like a they just gave role player, they, Luke Longley, or you bring in Robin for rebounds. You got they gave him, a shooter. They you gave know, him the all the fucking problem. right parts the around him and shit. And even then, they start stepping outside the box and going after Rodman and shit. When I tell you what, man, when Rodman was on the Pistons, I hated that motherfucker. But when he came over to the Bulls, I'm like, I'm glad to have you. Because I, I, I love him. I love him. He was a guy you love to hate. <laughs> Because he flopped like a motherfucker, he threw <laughs> elbows, and you know he was like Lamb Beer's fucking like protege, oh, and Lamb Beer was kind of the dirtiest player that ever played the fucking game. He's just a guy. That guy does just deserved to get a beat down. Rodman, that guy was fucking horrible. Rodman was so much fun to root for when he was on the Bulls, and I hated them too. And here's the thing: here's the thing with the uh, Kraus. The uh, he he's, he he tried to take credit for Jordan. Yeah, he didn't get it. And, and, but he did. He did deserve credit for Pippen, man. Central Arkansas kid, you know. Um, he's like, I want long arms, and like whatever he saw on him, and like, and he well, wait out. a minute, wasn't there a like a wasn't? I mean, I know he we're going off skew for Seattle baseball Rockets. here, but wasn't wasn't there a like a uh, a trade that happened yeah, during Seattle the draft? Drafted. Seattle drafted him. They they swapped picks. So we give we, didn't we give up like Orlando Woolbridge or? Oh, I think that was pre. That was before that. Hold on one second. I gotta bring this up, man. This is gonna yeah. drive me nuts. It was a Seattle. It was a Seattle trade. Do you remember what Bill Murray said about about Jerry Krause? Oh no, Krause. Like a, the Krause. heart of a champion and the body of a shrimp. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan would call him crumbs. Like they just mocked the guy. Oh openly. yeah. Did you guys watch uh, the last the the last dance? Yeah, they just showed it again. Oh yeah, I, I, I watched see that. It the, yeah, I saw it in, during COVID or whatever. Yeah. Jerry Krause does not do himself any favors. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just it's just his demeanor and just even his like body language. It's just oh god damn. But I was gonna <laughs> also add about Krause, uh, about Reinsdorf is that the you know the two thousand five White Sox. That was kind of a, a blessed year, too. You know, like, they still weren't doing smart things on paper, especially now when we look at it. You know, still, like, believing in guys like Scott Pusednik and, you know, players that were really kind of mediocre. And uh, and they still won. I mean, you know, they got hot. And I, I mean, I loved it. I mean, I was I was a Sox fan when I was in Chicago. And, and uh, Talk about that, pitching. That run, that run they went on was – that's as hot a, a team ever got in the playoffs. That was amazing. The pitching was insane. All, I didn't, yeah. didn't they were a steamroller. But I still didn't think that, that I think at that point, 2005, Reinsdorf, he's thinking like, yeah, this is pretty easy. I'll, you know, the Bulls will win again. And, uh, you know, I got the Sox thing down. But he didn't. He didn't have it down, you know. And, and He just saw his, like, $200 million investment turn into a billion dollars, like, in three yeah. years, you know. Yeah, another um, reason that these guys should pay for their own infrastructure, for God's yeah. sake. <laughs> the, so what uh, happened was the, uh, the 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 Bulls actually Scotty Pippen was picked fifth, by and then the Bulls picked old, yeah, and then the Bulls picked Olden Polonies from Virginia at eight. They traded those two guys, and then uh, I don't know what they added. Hold on a second. Let me scroll down here. How'd that trade turn out? Yeah, right. <laughs> Bulls favor. <laughs> uh, Six rings, baby. And basically, Jeff Sanders was selected. And they gave up a 1989 first round pick. I know you guys know all this stuff because you're in Chicago, but, you know, that Jordan House is still for sale you know yeah it, and and it went from like 40 million to 20 now it's like 20 million i don't know i think it's sure. like 12 now right right, right, right it turns right. out that people don't really they might want to like go to the open house but they don't really want to live in a celebrity's house necessarily you know especially when it's like still got the 23 on the gate or maybe they took it down by now i don't know but you know i think they overestimate like well, it's, it's not, not our great. dream it's not our dream to live in your house you know what i mean like you know right, right, right. well here's the thing when I was uh, working real estate, I actually was working on the same office as wanting to 
uh, Jordan. Ah. He was the uh, kind of like the, the real estate agent to all the like sports players. Wait, 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 time out. Walk that back. Who you work with? Her name was Juanita Jordan. That was like Michael Jordan's wife at the time before he got wait, divorced. Wait, wait, wait. She held a day job? Oh, yeah. She was selling all the fucking big high fucking profile fucking, uh, you know, like properties up in like Lake Forest and, you know, like the Bears players and fucking Bulls players and shit. I, I would not have suspected that we needed Jordan had a day job with a, with what, three kids? That was just their going out money, though. You know? <laughs> hey, man, you know what? It's, it's not all about the money. It's like you still have to have a purpose in life. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, real, uh, real estate. All right, okay. I mean, could you imagine never playing music and shit? Just like depending well, on no. someone to fucking help you out. <laughs> uh yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> bring it, bring it. Where is she? I will cook and clean. <laughs> you tell me, baby. Or at least hire hire a cook. Slam <laughs> dunk. This is going out. You're broadcasting this shit, right? I'm available to cook and clean. Whoever's watching, boom! Well, I'll never pick up a guitar again. You let me know. Must be pegged by a. <laughs> never mind. Well, I mean, you know, put a roof over my head for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking great. Where do you Where do you live, John? I mean, you don't have to give your exact. Attention. I'm a California Irving. Was that? Yeah. I have to have you guys for over for barbecue. I got this is uh. Um, we, I gotta have you guys over. You like? He's it. by the park. It's right across uh -huh. the corner park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see if you can see it. So, I don't know. It's probably too dark. That's Horner Park. Nice. Oh, it's fucking great park. Yeah, it's it's really nice. Anyways, I can hear on. Uh, it's funny. Like, uh, if uh, an ambulance goes by late at night. You'll hear like the coyotes howl. <laughs> oh no shit! I've yeah, seen like a mangy coyote running through my neighborhood. Yeah, and it was actually on like Halloween, like the day the kids went out and actually went trick or treating. And I see this fucking thing, and I'm like, "That's a fucking coyote!" Right away, I'm like, "That's a fucking coyote!" And it was all fucking like patchy and shit, <laughs> uh, shedding and but it just looked mangy as fuck. And I had to call three one one and tell them about it because it's like fuck. I mean, that thing was still in the area. Yeah, it's trick or treating and shit. It just like I don't know if it yeah. had fucking rabies or what. You know, Jeff, I did the same thing. So uh, I ran into a park in, into a coyote at, at Horner Park, cross street, in at twilight. So it's still light out. Um, and uh, it was during it was during the fall and during COVID too. That uh, um, um, but all the leaves, everything was everything was brown. All the all the brush was brown. Every all the you know so was the sky all... gray. <laughs> so um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, plus help a few bars for me with you. So <laughs> the uh, so so I come across this coyote. He's just perfectly disguised because he's in the brush. It's, his coat's the same color as the brush, and I I literally didn't see him until I was right upon the motherfucker, and they travel up and down the Chicago River. Uh -huh. Because you know, get unimpeded, because you know they don't have to cross streets; they just go by the river. They, and the same thing with train tracks. That's how they travel by train tracks. Mm -hmm. And um, um, and this motherfucker, I literally I was like five feet from him when I saw him, and uh, and my first instinct was, to, I'm like, oh, because they're smaller than you think. They're really small animals. Yeah, they're like fucking 50, 60 pounds. Yeah, they're really small. And I remember they said, wait, wanted to approach it. I'm like, nah, I probably shouldn't do that. And I backed up a little bit, and uh, the, the coyote took one look at me. And he's like, eh, "Whatever," and then just went back to what he was doing. He didn't give a fuck about <laughs> me. I was five feet away from him. He did not give a fuck about me. Well, it's city coyote. So I, so I call, and, I did the, and, I, and as I go back around the uh, uh, past, we're past the river, back to where the people jog and shit. Someone had their dog. I'm like walking the dog. I'm like, just by the way, you got a small dog. There's a coyote sitting right over there. You might want to. You might want to keep your dog on 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 the chain. Yeah. My when, guess when is I, that coyote's eating a lot of garbage right now. When I lived in Forest Park, I used to run in the morning um, through the cemetery. There's neck, you know, near where, we're, where our house was, and I mean, there was a road through it. I would, I didn't run 
between the graves or anything like that. But, but, uh, you know, I used to see coyotes in there and, uh, I guess I wasn't really that, you know, they weren't as big as a big dog or anything like wow. that. It looked like, uh, you know, I didn't want to get bit by it, but it looked like I could probably. Yeah. Fend them off. It, kick it, kick the shit out of that little. You could, fend, you could fend off a coyote. You might get cut off, but. I used to run right. with a, with a mini baseball bat too. Cause I. <laughs> I figured if a if a car pulled up and they were going to shoot me, I'd have that, that Mets mini bat, and uh, they probably just start driving. He's prey. Right, you know? He's prey. They'll go running for his life. <laughs> <run> the bat. <laughs> Funny. Well, shit. This was a good episode. Yeah, you know we're we're. I, I didn't want to say anything, but I think we're like getting close to the record, but we're still under. Yeah, we're right around two twenty six. All right. You want to call it then? And uh... I think we have to. Nobody's going to listen to us this long. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody <laughs> go? Does anybody go through the whole thing? I mean, I do because I just put the audio on at work and I'll I'll listen to it. But uh... the only the only one I missed was Memorial Day weekend with Norm. Um, but and, you, and did, you haven't heard Norm yet? yet? But I just was. Uh, it was just one of those things where it's the weekend. There's like everything was conflated. I just didn't get a chance to taken out of my routine i didn't sit down and listen to the whole thing but that's the only one i missed it's always good nice. to hear norm norm's voice you know like he's just got such a distinctive voice you know it's like oh uh, yeah 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 it's great <laughs> even better than just like watching it's just to, just to listen you know, it's like i don't know oh norm all right so i got a question okay can i ask a question real quick sure. um uh, uh, okay jeff i'm seeing you right now what is your main organized? So I said back in the day, I was like, I want back before DHs and uh, uh, and uh, uh, equal scheduling. I wanted American League hitters and I wanted National League pitchers. What's your? What is your? If you had to boil down your philosophy to attacking this game, approaching the game, what 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 are what are the things that uh, um, what what's your organizing principle? Get the best players at the best value you could possibly get. Oh, God, is that? Right, so I know it's boring as fuck, but I mean, it's like. How, I mean, do you how do you determine who the best player is? Research. Okay. You well, know, I buy books and shit, and I read about these saying? guys, okay, and I watch like the year before when uh when the draft goes out and why these guys were picked early, and I, I just I just research. Is there, like, is there a research tool you lean on most heavily? I can't say that completely, but baseball reference is the best research tool you can ever have. What does that tell you? Everything. Okay, let me let me walk you. It tells you all the history. It, it tells you where they were drafted. History I mean, I also lean a little bit on ML, MILB. And it's like MLB.com, but it's MILB.com, so that's the minors. So okay. you can find a bunch of information there about like who's hitting good right now and who's not. And but give me an example. I didn't what tell you that. that. That's just just. Shh, when when are, when are, give me an example of how that's worked for you. Is there a player that you caught on MILB that you're like, oh, I just learned this from MILB. Um, I'm targeting this player, and it turned and and it panned out. Dude, that's how my NA squad fucking comes about throughout the season. Well, give me a real time. Give me one player that you found through MILB, like you saw a broadcast or you read about through MILB. And you're like, oh, I didn't know that. You guys like him. You find Reese him. Hoskins. Okay, like th like four years ago. Yeah, Five oh, years. back, but farther than that, six years ago. When he first came up and hit like 16 home runs in the first 30 games or whatever the fuck it was? No, yeah, he was like, when I had him, he was like double A. And that's back when we had an NA roster and like Jose Fernandez came out and blah. Jose Fernandez was the number one pick for the first NA draft. And uh, I still got all those that picks. worked out for me. You got a spreadsheet. I that still have him on my room. team now. I wouldn't care. I, 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 I would have fucking paid anything for him. But, um, you know, Reese Hoskins was one of those guys where I had on my NA roster since he was in Double A. Because you found him through MILB. Is there a player oh, on your roster absolutely. right now? Absolutely. Is there a player right now in your NA that you found through MILB, or a player on your roster that you find through MILB? 
Can't tell you that. And if you're CIA, meh. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you play. All right, yeah, then let's go. Let's go back. Then let me go. I gave you the website. You do your own fucking research. Yeah. Is there a player? Is there a player? I'm asking if it worked for you. I'm not asking who you got. Absolutely, it's worked for me. Like, like, get, I can't get someone you already got. Who's someone you already got that I ain't gonna get that it worked that 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 was a player that you found through it. You follow? Or Jeff? Who, I know you're you're, you're you're juicing me for information so you can grab somebody out there. Um, but well, isn't this what this is about? I've yeah, shared with you. Internet, but you know, we're still like all against each other in a way, you know. I've but I mean, we can be friendly and stuff, but I, I can't just because you know what? I might want to pick him up three days from now. I'm not talking about someone who's available. Someone you got, but I do want to know that, lineup. Jeff. Who who is the player that's available right now in our league that you have your eyes on? That's what I'm asking. I'm not asking that. <laughs> Eric Swanson. I'm not asking that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Swanson. Exactly. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> All right, Lou, maybe you're more, more forthcoming. What What is your organizing principle? Do you look at pitchers, hitters? What are you looking at? You value, you value both of them equally, Lou? Um do you trend? Well, obviously up? not. He spent like fucking a dollar each for every one of his pictures this year. No, yeah, I, think I spent, but that's I spent what, two but that's on Freddie Peralta. Oh, you threw it off. <laughs> but that's what the pitchers – I got Chris Bassett for a dollar, and he's a top 20. Yeah. I, that's what they were worth. Pitchers were worth a dollar. They should have gone for more than that probably. Some of them. You know. I got to get a beer. I'll be right back. Oh, so, but Lou, okay. Um Mine's okay. real simple. I just, I, I, I mean, I look at a bunch of things, you know, there's, I look at sites that I don't necessarily use. Like what? My beer league stuff, but I, like what? I'm, but for my beer league stuff, I just, I'm on fan graphs. I used to go to roster resource, but now that's on fan graphs too. That's where I get my depth I, charts from. They're the best depth charts. I like them. And they, and they, and they keep them real time. Like you could sit, yeah, out it's, it's pretty quick, and I and I check it sometimes. Like Mark Canna, man, he's like missing some games. Do they have him drop to a platoon? Because as soon as the right. guy dropped to a platoon, I will drop him. Yeah, uh, you know, Marcelo Zuna got benched over the weekend because he hit that long single. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god, so I was making sure disturbingly if fucking roster stupid. resource had dropped him into a platoon or a bench roll, I would have dropped him. So I really am a big roster resource guy. Um, I haven't said that Uzono Uzono's been hitting the ball. Yeah, and uh, he's, val he's valuable. He's valuable. And for for relievers, I do look at closer monkey. I mean, that's you know, that's like my second opinion with roster resource. But that's it's about called, it. It's called closer monkey. Yeah, yeah, they're they're a good site. There's a there's a bunch there's a bunch of sites that probably all say the same thing. Like uh, um, I know that uh, um, who was talking about. It? There, there, there's like a couple main ones, like uh, 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 pitcher one, roster resource. I thought people looked at some. I was surprised that you guys don't look at this about thing. It's not gonna tell you anything you don't already know, um, it, except for the fact that it will tell you who it will tell you who you might be missing. Meaning, for instance, like that uh, um, on that uh, uh, baseball savant page, if you'd gone early in the season and what's his name, Rocker Rooker, the the A's guy, Brent Rooker. Yeah, so he's fucking looked, outfielder. Right, if you looked at who's available in our league right now, because <clears throat> because he just got hot, but you could see that it was not just hot that he was. Out of Lazy. Yeah, Sanchez, a, like, right? Christian, or did he drop him? The no, Christian him. Morel effect. Yeah, and it was a thing. It's a, and it, and it's a thing where it shows you that it wasn't just. It's a look under the hood. It's like okay, he's putting up numbers. Oh, is he getting lucky? Is it high Babbitt? You know, that kind of stuff. No, it's he's hitting the ball harder than anybody else in the league. His launch angle is is uh, is ideal, and that um he's uh, um uh, um squaring up the ball on mm. for like barrels per play pen. So so all that makes his numbers made sense. So there was a, every reason to pick him up at that time. But then some of the underlying numbers, like his high strikeout rate, have caught up to him, and yep. uh, the, and the lineup is shitty, like, and the park is shitty to hit in. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, he's uh, probably a trade candidate for fucking the, the uh, Oakland A's. To be honest with you. 
Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't see him being in their future plans, but maybe they can just like stock he's up. Older. He's like a 30 year old rookie. Yeah. Well, there you go. I'm probably the last team in the league that's going to be first on a young guy anyway. You know, like uh, uh, I'm too uh, conservative for that, you know. Um, and I can't really figure out which guy is going to hit the ground running and which guy's not, you know. So I, I just sort of stay away from that whole thing. Do you like yeah. rookie hitters or rookie pitchers better? Okay, not the meaning. Meaning, like an NA, an NA guy gets promoted. Uh, uh, yeah. Rookie pitchers, rookie, which, which, and I think rookie. I like good. rookie hitters over rookie pitchers. Yeah, I think rookie most pitchers get fucking hitters. lit the fuck up. But what like, I'll do is I'll, I'll, just try to, I'll just try to trade him. Yeah, you know, I, I know I'm not going to put him in. I think this. If you look, up. I've got like seven guys on the NA roster. Uh oh, we lost him. Did we lose him? Johnny, are you there? And that's how the episode ends. <laughs> <laughs> Is that junk? Junk. Junk. Well, well, we are getting. Uh, we are at that pretty point. long here, anyway. <laughs> But I'd hate to like close the room when if he tries to get back in. <laughs> so, like, we just left. I'm gonna say in the uh, Are you stuck? Fatigued. If he, uh, oh, he's out. He's out. Oh, I got a text. Is that from you? No. Well, yeah, no, you know what? It was because I, we were in the same room together communicating before this whole fiasco. Oh, that's from you, yeah. Yeah. I like the noises you got going on from my uh, when I text you. <laughs> well, it's an odd ending, but uh, it is time. It is time. Um... Yeah, fun times as always. Uh, we should maybe talk about seeing who would want to come back on for a second time. Yeah, yeah that's where we're we're uh, at that point now. Yeah. So I think Diane loves when we go long like this because she watches like these these ninety day fiance shows and stuff. Oh, she's watching like <laughs> below deck and shit. And uh, the best I can do with those shows on is like just shut up and not say anything because they just they drive me crazy you know yeah. my they name's drive me Paul crazy. that's between y'all <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah reality TV is before social media that was the start of the decay <laughs> yeah survivor <laughs> yeah uh, fucking MTV fucking uh, the real world Osborne's yeah <laughs> All right, Jeffy. I guess uh, maybe we'll just like stop it here and. Oh wait, John wants to come back in. Okay, good, good. We'll say goodbye and go. <laughs> no, we'll there talk we for another. We'll talk for another forty-five minutes. Just, I just bought you twenty minutes. <laughs> this is going to take a long time to upload. <laughs> You're what back. the fuck, dude? He's still connecting. <laughs> He's in. Hey, what the fuck? A coyote got into my apartment. Oh, yeah? Grabbed your phone, ran off yeah. with it? Thankfully, I had my Mets bat near me. Oh, Took man. care of the situation. Yeah, those Did Mets bats. Baseball they're... head with a smiley face? <laughs> they're like little bully oh, no. clubs. They're good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're losing Can't them. see anymore, though. We're losing our patient. On the next All episode, right, VR. He's gonna Chicago drop. Nine one one. Gonna drop. If he drops, we're done. Okay. Yeah. Should we just drop him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have anything left to say. 
I don't know, man. Um, how how was your last? How was your weekend? My weekend? I don't remember. Uh, uh, geez. You dropped. I didn't do much. What would you do? I don't know. All right, stop recording. I'm done seeing you. Goodbye. All right, I'm going to stop recording. I love you. All right, Jeff. Another good one. Another long one here. Yeah. Could have been a, could be a record breaker. Johnny's right? always a good guy to talk baseball with. I love that guy. Is this a record breaker? Did we break? Uh, I don't know. Don't Phil care. Record? About two and a half hours. Very close. Phil was around this time. I think Chad was around this time. So it doesn't really matter. I think one of them was like 240. Not that yeah. we're trying to go long, but it would be fine to go like half this long, even, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it would be okay. It'd be fine. All right, Jeff. Good luck this week. All right. Well, good luck to you as well. I think I'm off to a good start because I didn't really put up much innings and uh, didn't have a whole lot of guys in the lineup, and I still got 27 points. So as far as a week Monday goes, I'll take it. Yeah. As long as you don't squeeze me for one of the win-loss records, uh, I wish you luck. Well, don't finish a I'm point. I'm always trying to inch up. So, started in a doldrum, trying to work my way out of the garbage pile. All right, Shiner Bach. You have a Shiner yeah, Bach. box here. Shiner Bach, Boda Bach. All right. Good night, All right, Jim. ma'am. Have a good night. I will All talk right. to you later. I'm ending the show. Good night. All right. Bye-bye.